Hello, everybody! So, uh, the last few days we've just been playing around with all kinds of decks, just throwing everything at the wall, seeing if anything particular sticks. And now I think it's time to get a little more focused, cut away some of the decks that I'm sure are gonna just kind of be medium and get into decks that I think will be really good. And the first deep dive I really want to take is on uh, this Planeswalker deck. It's, um, everybody has a Planeswalker deck. A legend made a video of one. This one was given to me by random name to play a few nights ago. And it seems like everybody wants to build a four color, maybe some even build five color decks where they just cram all the good cards together. And that's definitely a worthy endeavor because we have some massively awesome planeswalkers to play with. So I'm going to start the work here on randoms uh, deck. So color, um, blue adds Jace, Oath of Jace, and um, Kiora. That's about it. Now, those aren't the most powerful Planeswalkers, but they are card advantage Planeswalkers. All of the Planeswalkers, in a way, are card advantage Planeswalkers, but those are pretty blatant card advantage Planeswalkers. But let's, um, let's start by reverse engineering the deck itself. So I'm going to take out a lot of cards. Um, and we're going to cut it down to the big draws, which would be the Planeswalkers themselves. Uh, one thing that blue does add is Reflector Mage, which is pretty good. It sets your opponent back on tempo and immediately gives you a body to protect your Planeswalker, so that's something to keep in mind too. But uh, let's try the no blue version first. So This is kind of the big ta-da is you get to play with these super powerful effects and to do it what we give up is we probably uh, concede that we have to do some mana fixing early and we have to survive in the mid game because in the late game we just start dropping these and things get crazy so one one two three four five six seven planeswalkers and avacyn all uh, very dangerous. Now, in order to maximize that, uh, we ha we should probably expect to play a turn one land that is tapped and a turn two um, some kind of a mana fix because we want to make sure that our mana gets fixed. So, let's uh, start from that perspective. Um, I like to run man lands, especially the lifelink one, it is the best, but otherwise I think we should run the ones that produce green because we know we want to have green on turn two. And if we're going to run that, those tap lands, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six tap lands already, I don't think we're going to ha have room for evolving wilds, but we'll see what happens. Just for now, I'm thinking that the lead is, you know, tap land, preferably with green. And then second land needs to either be a basic forest if it wasn't a tap land for green. Or it needs to be another basic or something that enters the battlefield untapped. So that we can play our Sylvan Ranger. Then um, fix our colors. Let's see, the other thing I want to go with Sylvan Ranger to get even more of that type of effect, but this one I think is almost better, is um, the Cultivator. So that can give us black mana. It can set us up for double green, which isn't necessarily necessary. But so now we have like these six early drops, and also um, if we don't, if we have to play a tap land, we can oath of Nissa. So this is kind of turn two. So turn three is where we kind of have three mana of multiple different colors, and we want to make some kind of a play that keeps our opponent from running us out of the gym. We want to state we want to keep their board under control because the odds are that turn 4 and 5 are going to be about planeswalkers. So um that's what we want to find is the cards that are just going to keep our opponent in check, make it hard for them to beat the living snot out of us before our planeswalkers stabilize. So obviously um 
we're not too attached to our Sylvan Ranger, but we might not want to give up our Cultivator. But if we have our Cultivator, we have four mana, so more options. Still, I think that one thing that's pretty clear is that we'll want Radiant Flames. It's not great with Cultivator, but um, what can you do? So, Radiant Flames is a pretty clear one. What's another card that could kind of stabilize our board? Oh, I didn't mention Oaths. Also, we'd love to play an Oath. Some way to get extra value out of our Planeswalkers. So, there's an Oath of Chandra, which is probably a turn three-ish play. And there is also a, um, let's think, let's think, what else can we grab? The Oath of Gideon, I suppose. I mean, this one is actually really value. The, the, the tokens can kind of save us from a few hits, but it's all about that extra loyalty so that our Planeswalkers do extra awesome things. And we're in black and white, so I don't actually think... Um, black and white aren't the primaries, though. Let's see. It is really tempting to play sweepers, sweepers, and more sweepers. Like, will we need Planar Outburst Languish? The, the problem with Languish and Planar Outburst is they're both double color, but we already have double white for Avis and double white for Gideon. Double black, double red. <laughs> Lots of doubles. I don't know. I, hmm. I think we do want the Outburst, though. We want to be able to reset the board. Do we want Languish as well? Like, are Sweepers going to be that big of a deal? We've already got this to make a kill and this to make a kill. Um, I think instead of Languish, we can run Declaration in Stone and just take out a key creature. Where are you, Declaration in Stone? I don't think we actually want Call of the Gatewatch. Obviously, we're playing a lot of Planeswalkers, and Call the Gatewatch means we get a Planeswalker to play. The problem is we take turn three off to do that, and I don't really want to take turn three off. I want um, I want to be able to set up to have a more stable Planeswalker when I do cast it, because what do we have, like seven? I mean, we're going to be casting Planeswalkers in this deck, just given time, that's, that's for sure. And we even have Oath of Nyssa to go find it, so... Um, I'm not a fan of calling the Gatewatch. Not a fan of throwing away my turn. So what else can we do? It's tempting to play uh, something like um, Nissa's. Uh, what's that card? Nissa's Re well, Natural Selection, that's it. That can help us set up our mana. We also have another Planeswalker here we could play. I don't think it really fits in the theme, but since we are, I mean, it fits in the theme, but I don't know if it actually does what we need it to do, but on its own, it's like a distraction. You can't play it with the other Nyssa, so that's something to keep in mind, but I mean, still, it can crank out plants, it can gum up the ground. It's a consideration, and it's only three mana. It is the cheapest Planeswalker. If we have an army of tokens from some of our other Planeswalkers, it might, you know, pump those up. But we'll see. Also, I kind of want to do... I think we can also... Hmm. The other option that we have, instead of always trying to sweep the board and kill everything, is to maintain our own board presence. And there's green has an awesome package for that, and we're already well into green. So let's see what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Sylvan Advocate, and Reclamation Sage, and Woodland Wanderer which along with Sylvan Advocate is Team Vigilance. Since we're in four colors, it's a really good play. And now it's not very good against Reflector Mage, but um, we do have such a variety of plays, like ones and two of us at Reflector Mage, it's not like it's gonna stick a second, like it's not gonna, like it's gonna lock us out of our fourth and fifth turn very often. That is a big difference in Reflector Mage here than in duels. Reflector Mage in, in standard there's a lot of creatures that um, there are four of in every deck, and if you hit a four of with a Reflector Mage, there's a good chance that he might have another copy in his hand, and then Reflector Mage just strands that copy in the hand as well. That's a pretty big deal. Um, and that's not going to happen very often in duels, especially in a deck like this that's just mythic and rare as all heck. 
So if we're going to play Woodland Wanderer and we're going to play Advocate, then I probably don't need Planar Outburst as much as I need Languish. And you see we've really got very few black cards, but the ones we have take double black, so we may as well play other cards that cost double black. Now, what do we do about a big critter like a guy's revenge? I guess we have to trade with it. We have to battle it with our creatures and blockers, which is not really where you want to be. I guess you can trade it with your bellower. Now, you don't have to always have an answer to everything. You can battle your way in, out, and around some things, so it's not like I'm going to stop and try to find the perfect solution to Guy's Revenge, because there aren't very many good ones. Probably getting in the way with a Woodland Wanderer is about as solid as that gets. So how much removal do we actually have? We've got Oath of Chandra, Declaration in Stone, Radiant Flames, and Languish. Otherwise, the deck is very proactive. So another card that we can play and I'm not sure if it's really going to fit the deck, is Eile Eternal Pilgrim, which is a 2-3. It's in our colors. It probably doesn't come down on turn 2, but it's... I'll have a look. Um, vampires, I think it's a complicated thing to build. It doesn't really... The pieces don't fall into place by themselves, let me put it that way. Um... If you build the version that's like straight madness all synergy, I found it very lacking. Very, very lacking in my opinion. Um, it just, like, you get out ahead, but then it felt like it turned into a grindy game and it didn't feel like you were picking up the amount of card advantage you needed and it felt like I was playing weak little creatures. So my vampire deck right now is very different. It's, um, my current take on vampires actually includes not many vampires. It has the Bloodseeker, it has Olivia's Bloodsworn, and it has Olivia herself. So there's a little vampire package with some haste and things. The Encourageable use are in there. But the rest of the deck is all about burn and other haste creatures. Like it has Forerunner of Slaughter, and it has Dust Stalker, it has Reality Smasher. So it's kind of a vampire um, Eldrazi hybrid, I suppose. It even has some werewolves and Gyro Reach Bandit. But it's amazing how much burn and haste you can pack into a red black deck right now, and that's what I'm trying to do with that with that thing. Um, anyway, that was a bit of a sidetrack. Let me try to get back into what I'm doing. I think I want to try out Eile, just because the death touch is really good and the raid is really good. Two mana for this creature is pretty nuts. Um I am trying out in the red in the wolves deck the uh, trample spell or, or the uh, flash enchantment that gives them all trample. The thing is, I don't know if the opponent flips them back over that that spell isn't very good. But you can just pass the turn and reflip them, I guess. But then you have to take an attack step without it. I don't know. I'll figure it out. It's all about working, working on things. With Radiant Flames and Languish, I don't feel like this Nissa is going to do much, although we have a lot of, like, token-producing walkers. And we will have plenty of green mana, and it can be a heck of a distraction. I love me some plants. Gotta pull one more card out. Maybe it's an Oath of Chandra, because... I mean, the benefit isn't that great, but I do want, I do just want to be able to kill things. Maybe it's a languish. Maybe we don't want to be wiping our board that much with all these little guys. I mean, languish does like wipe out, keeps our woodland wanderer and our advocate alive, but yeah. Um, I think for now we'll try it without a languish. This is a very this is a much more proactive deck than I first envisioned. We have a good amount of like removal and utility spells, but mm. <laughs> there's no doubt these decks are fun. I fully I, I feel you there. I'm I'm all about that. I mean that's a big draw to these things. They they are just fun as they get. Now I gotta get my mana sources kind of right. 
So we definitely want at least 14 green sources, preferably 16, to make sure that we can cast these on turns uh, 2 at the latest. <laughs> So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we've got a ton of green source going on. We're in good shape there. And with that in mind, these Sylvan Rangers can be any other color. So these are going to double as four of any color. And these are going to double as two extra black. So how much black mana do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 2 Deathcap Cultivate, uh, 7, 8. 2 Cultivators is um, 10, and 4 Rangers is 14. So black's good. How about red? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in red. So a little red soft. And how about... Um, is that all? No, white. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 12. So 12 white, and so it would be beneficial to get these retreats in there for a green source. I guess we pull, we can pull forests because we have so much green. We'll try it. If it fails, we'll come back to the drawing board. But the big thing is we can't not have green on turn two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm. I think what's even safer is to turn those into Evolving Wilds instead, instead of the retreats. I didn't want to play Evolving Wilds. I don't like cards entering the battlefield tapped too often, but I think that that's even safer than the retreats because we keep our green sources that high. All right. Uh, this is my super friend's deck, and let's see. Let's take it out. Let's uh, start really working on it. I've only played a couple games with it. A lot of this is still kind of spitballing, but let's go. Let's go into the wild. Actually, this isn't my super friend's deck. The credit for the design itself should go to Random, who brought it in here for the launch day party. Random name of NGA fame, but now I've done my tweaks to it and I want to go see how it plays. <sighs> A notable absent is Westvale Abbey. I just feel like we can do so much better stuff with all of our mana every turn. I don't think Westvale Abbey will and I just don't want any colorless sources. So, we're gonna try it without the Abbey. I really don't feel like I can risk playing a colorless land in this deck that's already color super hungry. It's super friends and it's super hungry for the right colors. All right, I am the Walrus. Got a Beatles fan. Beatles fan for breakfast, let's go. We got our green source, and this curve is pretty much exactly the way we built the deck, so let's go get paid off. <laughs> exactly what we built the deck for. So one white, one red, one green. I guess we get our black with the ranger. Let's see what we draw, but I think black is pre pretty obvious choice. Gosh, I wish I could have four Oath of Nyssa in this deck. That would make me so happy. There we go. One thing I took out was Explosive Vegetation, which is not a card that I just don't think you want to take turn four off to ramp. I think you have to start playing your Planeswalkers or your, your removal spells or more ways to protect them. I think that Random's deck, if it has uh, any um, flaws, it's that it just tries to do too many things that don't affect the board enough. Like, yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it there for the moment, but... Your turn, Mr. Black Rogue's Passage Carrier Thrill Player. He 
Here comes another vampire. <laughs> Azori's got so many new archetypes. Control, Spirit, Aggro, Tempo. Have you played the Spirit Aggro? Bounce. I hope you. I can just call you Bounce, OC616. Have you played uh, Spirit Aggro? Is it good? Wow, Bone Splinter's on a token? Turn 5 kill? Ha! Sweet. Do you want to tell me just a couple of the highlights since we're just chilling here? I guess the answer here is another black. <laughs> <laughs> Call me anything, sugar. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, let me see. If I were building spirits, I'm trying to think off the top of my head of how the heck that could even happen. I mean, are you... Is that Kithian's tactics type play? I guess there's the vessel that makes two spirits. I just haven't looked at it very hard. I'm having a hard time even think of it. Oh, Invocation of the Geist. I guess putting that on a flyer is pretty brutal, huh? So, what do we want to play it from here? I guess we can get our Harbinger on. And just start uh, looting with it. Fix our draw a little. We're already at 7. Life is good. I don't think we want this Cultivator. It's a little too late in the game and it doesn't work with the Sweepers. Hey, land. I can appreciate land. <laughs> Alright. Uh. Yeah, invocation of Geist on the spirits. Sounds crafty. Blessed spirits. SBMTG. What's SBMTG? Is that sideboard? No. SBMTG. I feel like I should know this. I mean, I read... Oh, what does that stand for? Whose name is that? I don't know. Or is it a website? I really feel like I should know it. I read Star City and Channel I, uh, and The Mothership, but I haven't read a bunch of other things. My opponent over here is uh, fumbling... fumbling. Oh, Strictly Better MTG. I don't watch that. Do you recommend it? Is it something you really like? I have a I have a ton of YouTube channels to watch and most of what I watch is about duels, so that's kind of my excuse, but just curious. Just curious if uh, you are a big fan. <laughs> All right. Here comes that critter. Now he's got a rogue's passage, which is going to be a problem, so I think we have to ob that blight herder. Budget Azorius creatures, Topplegeist, Chains, Kintree, not, no, nope. Bygone Bishop, Spectral Shepherd, uh, Blessed Spirits, ha, Reflector Mage, yeah, no pacifisms, I guess we run Suppression Bonds, Vessel, yep, Invocation, you know it, um, Celestial Flare, hmm, uh, I think we run Declaration in Stone. For that, uh, Ojatai's command. Not sure what to do about that. I mean, that's such a <laughs> bone to ashes. No Ojatai's command, but that looks interesting. Yeah, how about that formatting? Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> All right. So, what do we want to do with this turn? We got double red. We got double green. We got double black. We've got single white. So, we want the Sylvan Ranger to get a white. So, we don't want to discard it. I think we definitely want to play Ob and minus it. I think we want to take Nahiri up. So let's do that before we play Ob. Maybe we'll draw a Declaration in Stone. So I think I want the Radiant Flames to go away right now. Alright, there's another white source. So next turn we can discard the Ranger if we don't pull Bellower out of our deck with Nahiri Ultimate. <laughs> Um, 
If he has a reality smasher, that will be hasty and it will kill my guys anyway. I can't think of any other haste card out of this. Let's see, any other haste card out of black? Nah, black isn't known for haste, right? I mean, Olivia's Bloodsworn, I couldn't block anyway. So I guess I'll go ahead and take my one damage. Play this. Go get the white before I forget what I'm supposed to get. Which happens all the time on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, Bone Splinter is a token. So, our opponent, if they were um, familiar with the rules of card advantage, would probably have figured out that you don't really want to play bone splinters sacrificing your child of night targeting a token from Oath of Gideon our opponent we just literally got better than a four for one out of Oath of Gideon because he kept using the uh, bone splinters child of night and bone splinters child of night on the token and we're getting extra bonus loyalty from uh, the oath so that's value right there <laughs> All right. I never thought I'd get to do this, but let's do it. Everyone is playing starter archetype decks on Steam. Well, at least Ramp isn't a starter archetype deck, right? Count your blessings. <laughs> Just, uh, this game, um,. I kind of wish he'd concede, and then we could move on to the next one. <laughs> we have new archetypes. Oh, yippee. <laughs> that sounds cool. I don't ever build with the archetypes, so maybe I should do some research and try that out. Or maybe it would be good for a laugh, but right now I'm just, uh... Right now I'm way too into the... Just, uh, try-hard... Try-hard building over here. <laughs> See if our opponent can languish us, but even if they do, we're in pretty good shape. <laughs> to put it mildly, you know. Now, Nahiri's gonna give us Bellower back into our hand, but that just means we can cast it again next turn. Oh! He's holding out to Oblivion, so us. Boros allies. Talk about the leet sauce. <laughs> what a broken deck that must be. <laughs> Alright. You die. Let's loot. I guess I should have looted first in case I draw a declaration in stone. Oh well. At this point, I think it's okay. I think it's okay to screw up a time or two. Cohort, absolutely broken. Can't believe they put that in, in, in duels. What a ridiculous idea. Um. <laughs> Planar Chaos is a mechanic or the set? <laughs> Trying to remember what that even means. Alright, so I can still play this Bellower, and if I cast another Advocate, I believe I get a 6-6 six, six Kissing Quagmire, if I uh, know my magic. I haven't had two Advocates down with a land, but I think that's how this works. Oh! Um, okay. Where's my other Sylvan Advocate? Did it die? What just happened? Bug? Oh, you know what? I bet he exiled it. Look at that. His Oblivion Sower exiled two cards I could have fetched with my Bellower. Cheats! 
Oh, he wants me to tap my Quagmire and play that? No, thank you. <sighs> Breaker of armies! Hello, friend. <laughs> You don't impress me much, Breaker of Armies. Alright. Let's get it. So that was some kind of black Eldrazi deck. Interesting. But man, Bone Splinters. The, the, oh my gosh. That was just hilarious. Bone Splinters on my Gideon tokens. Somebody only knows one way to play, and it's by killing whatever's in sight. Next! Next song, next song. Next. He was playing the. De that was the Devoid Decay starter arch archetype? Well, you've got the not serious face, but. I kind of believe you. <laughs> you could here. Here's what you can do if you want a good time bounce. Just make up, make up, whatever starter archetype you want, and I will believe you that it exists. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them to put just about anything. <laughs> The Elementals archetype, you know, because we only have one Elemental uh, triggering card in the game. This card, this hand has our colors, but it's underpowered. We could draw nothing and be very sad. Why do I have Lumbering Falls in this deck? I feel stupid. Lumbering Falls doesn't work in a not blue deck. <laughs> Well, apparently the card advantage archetype is one that's missing from a lot of people's radars. <laughs> so I have to go take Lumbering Falls out of this pile and get some other green sources into this pile. That'll leave us with four man lands. We could put needle spires in but I don't think needle spires really fits what we're trying to do so it's either two forests probably or two west vales because they were just as green sources alrighty red we need red in fact we only ha we don't have uh, we definitely need red <laughs> We need another red before we get to six. Yeah, that's right. I have an elf and you have a thorn bow. Can't touch this. Do 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 ch ch do 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 You got me. Bang. Bang, bang. Here comes the elf. I won't block it. Bang, bang. Hits me for one. I'll just have to take it. Here they come. Here they come. You know what? 
the uh, rumors of Elf's demise were greatly exaggerated because just because Jagged Scar is gone don't mean they're not going to keep bringing it. <laughs> Let's hope he gets a big four drop elf. I would love to see you play Dwenin. Bring that big four drop elf on, baby. I haven't used Brain in a Jar yet. It doesn't look like a card that I would like. Well, that's a good play from my opponent. A play that will make my day harder. Let's do that. Black Green Elves is in, in, is in standard. Yeah, I know. It's kind of a funny deck. Um... I guess we get our red mana down, but no, we get a white mana down, then we can use the um, either the Quagmire or the Shambling Vent to block. So We're going to hold on to this. We're going to try to get him to tap out for a bigger, awesomer elf before we sweep him. What do you think, Bounce? Is Brain in a Jar great for control decks? Just curious. Okay. Do I risk a land here? Especially a black one. I mean, it's kind of foreseeable that he has a combat trick. Otherwise, I don't think he'd attack. Let's see if we can... No, if I activate it, it could die to removal. No, let's just take it. See what he wants to do with his turn. If he does nothing with his turn, we can attack him with our shambling vent and gain life. Okay, more elves. I can dig that. Two cards in hand. Probably a wild size or similar combat thingy. Guess we have to start playing the red mana now. And I think we better languish now. He gets to evolve he gets to evolutionary leap, but at least we set his board back. We'll have to hit him with the next sweeper. So our player, our opponent seems capable enough. Might of the masses. So that is a pump spell he runs. And wow, ripping. <laughs> I agree that Brain and Jar doesn't look very good. Someone will have to prove to me that it is good for me to buy in. There's plenty of cards like that. I just say, you know what? I'm not going to test this card. Someone else is just going to have to show me that it's a great card. Alright, so he's going to hold Nissa back. So we know he has a Nissa in hand. And I believe we saw his other card too. That's not very good. Still don't have Chandra mana, and we've drawn a bunch of lands. I guess um, this will go get another red, but let's play this one so that we can activate Hissing Quagmire. Yeah. And we want to quag block the uh, advocate, is the plan. And he's probably going to Nissa. Uh, he's probably going to Nissa us, so we're going to have to dig out of a hole. Ah, uh, giggity indeed. Evo Leap is still a pain in the butt. We have answers. We have Bellower, Rex Sage, and Nahiri. Just none of them showing up. All that's showing up is our mana base.
Get in there, bro. He didn't even pause, so maybe he doesn't have a combat trick ready. All right. Look at him go. What do you guys think? If we activate Chandra using the um, plus ability, do you think our opponent will respond by sacking his creatures with Evo Leap even though we're not wiping the board? I think he will. <laughs> or if we uh, activate for maybe one or two? I think I'm actually... I'm really tempted to zero, because he can kill our Chandra, but we get five new cards, and we have a deck full of sweepers, and maybe we get a way to deal with Evolutionary Leap. Oh man, that's tempting. But if I just kill his stuff, he's not going to have haste or anything. <laughs> One is a bluff. I know, right? Isn't it? I like the bluff. I really do. Uh, so much value on the bluff. Yeah. Got to do got to do right. I guess he oh, see he can see the loyalty. He can see the loyalty change now. All right. I I thought it would be like Rolling Thunder where he couldn't tell. <laughs> Visionary. Bone Splinters is something he plays, and Lissalana. So, we can probably get this to live. He will probably be able to, um, let's see. He'll probably make a bunch of elves, and then we will probably want to uh, zero it Chandra and try to get to a sweeper. Okay, he also has Might of the Masses. Good to know. But we'll have to decide if that's the play. Let's see how big his board goes. I don't know why he played Visionary first. He's been playing decently, but that didn't look smart. And the elves just keep on coming, baby. The elves just keep on coming. Oh, there's a good draw. Finally. Where have you been all my life? Chandra can negative, kill that, kill that, kill that. Even with one, we have an elf. Always with the pausing. Asta absolutely makes sure that Might of the Masses won't save his bacon from something. Little more value for the road for our Evil Leap friend. Shaman, yep. That'll be really painful this turn. Lissalana, that's gonna be painful. And yeah, I wanna use that. Okay, so now we got a choice. Um, he's gonna have Shaman, he's gonna drain me really low. We're gonna need to wipe his field. Absolutely need to. Um, if we plus Chandra here, then next turn, we can minus it to wipe his board. Or we can draw a new hand and potentially draw Radiant Flames to wipe his board. And just 
get more action. I think we're going to plus Chandra, we're going to attack his Nissa, and he's either going to lose his Nissa or chump one of the tokens. Okay. And then we have a Chandra on three that might be able to uh, get the job done, taking out his new elf board next turn. But this way he'll probably block with a thorn bow. Nope, he lets Nissa die. So he's going to try to drain me out, I think. We have to remember he has a Might of the Masses. If he has a... So we have to block both. If he has a Rogue's Passage, that could be lethal. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got to look for the little things, dude. Alright, so I think he's going to follow this with Shaman. Yep. And that's going to hit me really hard. If he has a second Shaman, I'm dead. So what was the main thing that went wrong this game that left us in this spot? Uh, I think we just I think we just drew too much land and too little action. Uh, the evolutionary leap without an answer to it. That's what really got us this in this trouble. Um... So he has two re evolutionary leaps. He played pretty smart. He always left a lot of mana up so that a sweeper didn't blow him out. So, yeah. Um, we also didn't have Chandra on time. So the mana got us a bit. We drew all the lands, but mostly the wrong ones. Oh, well. One thing we can take from that is that elves, they're not quite dead. <laughs> We swept him twice, uh, and that evolutionary leap just reloaded him like, whoa. We have more ways to answer his leap than he has leaps, and but he got the leap, we didn't get the answer. Um, so that was green, black, elves, us. So what could I have had in there otherwise to fix that? I don't know. I want to play that match again. I just feel like... I don't know. I think I win a best two out of three with that matchup, but... Without Evolutionary Leap, I just... His his hand was gonna go pretty, pretty much nowhere. Oh well. Let it go, let it go. Lost to some freaking elves. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, I gotta get that uh, lumbering falls out. Uh, gotta bounce. You gotta learn from your losses, though. If there's anything to learn. I has it accepted now. I was just trying to figure out if there was anything that really kind of failed me in that game. That hand with lumbering falls, because I don't have any blue cards. <laughs> That failed me. Um. <laughs> well, this isn't the... Uh, <laughs> uh, no disrespect, my friend, but this isn't the 3B channel. <laughs> I understand it is not the, the 3B way, but this ain't the 3B channel, baby. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, take it back out. Anybody else see that? I just switched two lands, and it looks like speed, strength, all went up. I guess that's what happens when you take out lands that don't do anything. <laughs> Which doesn't explain how the AI built their mana bases in the last uh, Battle for Zendikar block. <laughs> Let's, um, I'm actually going to look that guy up for a rematch. 
It's probably another game by now, but I can ask. Give him like to the count of 20. Okay, no reply. Aw, uh, don't be jealous, Nighthawk. I'd throw you my gold if I could. Come play me on Xbox. I'll concede to you and you can take the gold and we can, you know, try to run that gambit over and over. Play late at night so there's nobody else to play. <laughs> How are you finding the priority bug? I don't think anybody likes it. Um, I mean, it's a big negative. I try to I try to stay positive and not like uh the day after I played till five in the morning and I woke up like five hours later and I sat down with my notebook and I, I got on the internet and I just read all about the bug, you know. It's all over Reddit and it's all over uh NGA the things that it does to the game. And I just took my notebook and I wrote about certain cards and ways that I could play to try to keep it from screwing me over. And I think I you know, I think for the most part, I figured out what I need to do. I'm trying to approach it with the mindset of trying to play the game that we have, not the game as we think it should be. And that's, you know, that works for me. Or at least I think it does. I mean, obviously, when the AI taps your lands wrong or something happens in duels that would never happen in Paper Magic, you can get mad about it or you can figure out how to play it right in duels. You gotta. I, I just feel like you have to play the game that we have, not the game you think we should have. Yeah, the priority thing is a pretty, it, it's its definitely a bug and not a, um, it's a bug, it's not the way it's intended to work. Whenever there's a card that we can play, like an instant or an effect that we can use, um, then yeah. One way to keep priority from passing, this is some real tech for you guys, true story, bone saw. If you have a bone saw in your hand at all times or on the field with one mana available all, at all times, you will not get priority bugged. So there you go. There's your tech. S straight out of the notebook. <laughs> you can thank me later. <laughs> Not great, um, but we have 26 lands. Let's hope we just don't get mana screwed. On the draw, I think we keep. Yeah. 
Hey, it's not my fault I broke bone saw while the rest of you guys were complaining about priority. <laughs> oh man, um, this is actually rough because as much as I want to cast the cultivator, well, we can go cultivator on two, Nissa, and fetch on three. So I think I do just want to go get the red so that we can definitely get to Chandra. Yeah, I don't like it. Hey, if you don't want priority to pass, that's a way to do it. Why do you think they added bone saw? That's probably the whole reason it's in this game. <laughs> Just put a bone saw in your hand and never let it out, and you will always get to keep your priority. <laughs> yeah, they knew. Don't 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 let it fool you. They knew what they did. They knew what they did. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll get to cast it. We gotta pull up some white, but Sylvan Ranger can do it. Wrong Nissa. Up yours. This Nissa's fine. It's just not great. <laughs> Wrong Nissa. Oh, that's an interesting draw. Because if we play it. Well, what do we want to do most? Do we want to go Ob and fix our mana for white? Or do we want to play Nissa and play a tap land, untap, and then we have four mana, but we don't have Nahiri? So it is better to set up with a Ranger, go get white, play Quagmire. Okay. <laughs> Yes, please. I would like to use the ability. We could also... Hmm. We could also play the other Cultivator. Untap with five. I mean, that's fine. There we go. Let's get big. <laughs> yeah, our opponent, our opponent trimming their deck down to that 80 card stack. Which is recommended by Xbox Superstars. And there he is, unable to play any of those uh, tremendous, any cards from that tremendous stack on, on Curve. It's just not right, man. Why doesn't it work that way? So, choices. I don't really want to loot my hand with Nahiri. I've got good cards. There's nothing tapped to target, so Nahiri can wait. Ob is going to join the fray. <laughs> Which means next turn Chandra gets to join the fray. <laughs> Chandra! And this deck... Uh, this game, yeah, this game isn't going to count for much. So now we're kind of playing on freebie time. <laughs> and because I know that Nighthawk wants to see Nahiri do her uh, bad biatch thing, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Have a look at this girl. She just nuked, uh, she just burnt the house down. That art behind her is intense. Don't need you. Yep, you're better. Put that out there. Man lands and Sylvan Advocate. Life is beautiful. <laughs> Normally I would take that concession, especially with all these Planeswalker triggers, but I know you guys want to see Nahiri get some action. I know you guys. I know what you need. Woo! I guess he's using black in that fat stack. You wouldn't know it. Alright. Ticking up, ticking up. I guess I should have drawn first. Playing loose, not giving a deuce. Ah. Doing it. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight.
Big black deck with white cards. Let's clobber him. Oh no! We turned on his reprisal. We were foolish to think we wouldn't. We were foolish to think we could just get away with making a 4-5 creature without being punished. I do think reprisal should, you know, if you can make room for it, it probably goes in more decks because of A, the Eldrazi, and B, Sylvan Advocate. I think those cards uh, kind of necessitate it and make, give it, give it a, you know, it's got more targets now. I also think green, like, I, I think green just stayed strong. It was strong, it stayed strong. Oh no, don't gain life. Combo. Our opponent is comboing off everybody. Fear. Be afraid. I got two of them in their 80 card deck. <laughs> nah, reprisal's not really a three of. Two at the most. Probably just one. But still means it probably makes the cut, whereas before I don't even think it. you needed it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Celestial Flare is still like one of the only ways to deal with Guy's Revenge. Maybe the real answer is one of each. Depends on what your deck is trying to do. Declaration in stone, baby. Um, let's go. Let's get ultimate, because I know you guys want to see Nahiri go ape shit. Which do we get? Avacyn would gain haste. My creatures would gain indestructible. <laughs> oh, man. Bellower is a good one to get, too, because you get to keep the advocate. Um, but I think we'll do Avacyn, because we can. We have become indestructible. I should have done that before I made my three ones, but it doesn't really matter because they're expendable and I don't care if they die. And we'll play these after combat. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. Wah! This is my bad, uh, disturbed impression. I imagine BBs to be much more amazing. So that's going to trigger Avacyn, but she's not actually going to flip. She's going to come back to her hand. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Thank you, Nahiri, for getting Avacyn and making her be awesome. Guess who's back? Back again. Avi's back. Tell a friend. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? All right, let's put him to bed. No wonder you have so much salt, dude. You probably have to keep all that inside at school, teaching kids, and then you come home and it's just like, why? I go through all this, I'm teaching the future of the world, and you dare to acid moss me in my spare time? Duh! I'd be salty too. <laughs> So didn't really uh beneath me. Okay. Uh I didn't really learn much I would say from that game. But hey, not every game's a, a learning moment. A lot of them are like, wow, Xbox meta, come on guys. Hey, been watching streams, love your gameplay. Only been able to do 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 do.
Now here you see meh, we went and got Avacyn. We fetched Avacyn out of our deck. I'm sorry, Nighthawk, that you weren't impressed, but there were no there was nothing to exile, there were no tap creatures to kill. So, um, this can create double green. This will get me white or black. This double Nissa is not really good. And there's no removal of any kind. But we're on the play. I'm going to keep and see where this goes. Ah, that's a there's a draw. Except we didn't set up our green mana, so bummer sauce. Uh, so what can we do this turn? Well, we can go fetch a green mana, or we can play the mountain. And the next turn we can play that, and then go get a green mana. So I don't think we want to fetch green, which means, uh. Maybe I just want to play the crag? Because then that at least keeps the option open that if I draw another green source, I can Nissa next turn. I guess that's the play. Although really, I should have just played this first because I know I have like Sylvan Rangers and Deathcap Cultivators in my deck I could draw, so... Oops! Play a green source tapped first, unless you have an untapped green source in your hand. Deck note. And we didn't draw it, so we either Nissa for the other forest. This gets me double black. This would get me other white. And we cultivate. Yeah, I guess we cultivate to get our other source. But cultivate could get horribly awry, but I don't think. I mean, we'd rather that than Nissa get horribly awry, so. There we go. Fetchy fetch. You know how awesome it is being able to just fetch your mana and play your lands without thinking? Now, if I get Acid Mossed, what do I want my opponent to target? Which is how I've been playing for so long, it's actually a little hard to let go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Moss, post-traumatic stress disorder. For real, for real. We'll do this one. It's not like the tick down on this is going to be very important in this deck which may mean it's not a very good card in this deck, but at least we can fog with some plants for a while. Wouldn't it be, like it's terrible Nighthawk, right? Cause you're trying to get them to choose the wrong land, but I bet the right land, so to speak, was just on top of the deck, uh, on top of the pile. And they just picked the first thing that Moss targeted. <laughs> it was probably a total accident. They probably did it completely mindlessly to troll you. All right, so Oath of Gideon. We could play Soren this frickin' turn, for God's sakes. I actually think that's the play, and I think we just tick him up to get our opponent to commit more to the board, and then we'll know what to play around. But, yeah. I don't think I even need to kill his Nissa. I'm not that worried. Oh, now he's gonna ha now he's in a hard place. If he commits to the board, we flames him. <laughs> That's Cultivator playing uh, Soren a turn early. Woo! He's got his Radiant Flames. Nice. I guess he's just showing me that. Because <laughs> that would not be the play in this uh, particular instance. But we are going to Radiant Flames the board, because we want that Nissa gone. 
He's going to attack. We're going to block with a plant. It's going to be awesome. What's he going to peck at with that stupid pilgrim's eye? He's going to peck, peck over there. Anything I can do differently because of this? No, I still definitely want to uh, flames, but let's soar and draw first. Now, normally, like in the in the with with the la in the last format, I would play. Uh, I would tap this for mana. And then I would play the Radiant Flames using that mana. But here, that doesn't work very well. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, it just doesn't work very well. It, it's like it never highlights the mana in your mana pool anymore. Which is a big pain. And really screws with my head. So, I mean, is that fine? I'd rather tap the white. Because I'd want to use Nissa this turn. Okay. Gotcha. Or no, I want to play Oath of Gideon. I don't want to play Nessa this turn. That would be silly. Because we don't have enough lands to make Nissa go cray cray, and we have another Nissa on the battlefield, so we don't really want to flip her yet. So I guess we'll just get our other forest this way, so that we don't have to feel pressured into casting Nissa at any point. So our opponent might also be like, I mean, look, they're natural five color, and they're suppressor, suppression bonds on Soren. Woo! Alrighty. Ah, but it is. What else you got? <laughs> got more suppression bonds, I hope. Eventually, I will draw a way out of those bonds. I'm just going to go for Nissa's ultimate from this position, since he has no threats on the table, and he's probably playing some kind of a control deck, too. I believe Legend got to ultimate his Sora on his very first video. I was like, oh my god. There that guy goes. Doing the ridiculous. Alright, so Oso is going to get a Quagmire. That's good for him. He got a man land out of me. Well, that's nice. Let's tick Ob up since we have answers. Loyalty is a good thing. Ranger. You can get a clue. You can get on the board. I don't know why the elected cards glow white. Makes much harder to tap mana now. Yeah. Uh, I now like mana tapping instead of getting better and kind of more targeted just got uglier and worse. Uh, do I think ramp is still tier one? The planeswalker deck you're running is up there too. Got to find out, dude. Um, I I've played against some ramp decks, and I actually have had pretty good win percentages against them. But I need um like I need uh, to play more against like opponents I really trust to play ramp well, so that I know that my opinion isn't uh, dramatically biased by again the post traumatic uh, disorder, right? The post-traumatic uh, moss disorder. It's easy to have a biased opinion because of that. Get him in there. Get it out there. Bone saw is tier one. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, have you guys done a Nissa Ultimate? I think we're about to do a Nissa Ultimate. That would be new. I haven't done a Nissa Ultimate. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see what our opponent has for us. They've got a handful of cards. They've got five colors. What could be wrong? I mean, is their hand all like Kozilek and Reality Smasher that they can't cast? <laughs> Spatial Contortion? It certainly does make like the possibilities in decks different. I imagine they're a Planeswalker deck too at heart, but they just haven't done anything. They're flooded pretty bad. Two Pilgrim's Eye, Nyssa, and Oblivion Sower is all they've done. Oh yeah, Suppression Bonds. I forgot they have another Suppression Bonds, and he's going to go for Ob. What do you read? Gain X life, draw X cards. X is the number of... Number of what? Lands I control? Sweet! <laughs> There's a Radiant Flames that we knew about. Maybe I shouldn't have played the Oath of Gideon, but I mean, I wasn't going to do much else with my mana. I guess I could have powered up a Shambling Vent and gained two life instead. That would have been smarter. Oh, dude, new Jace is good. Like, really good. Not broken. I mean, he's obviously... He's, he's more of a baby Jace than baby Jace, but he's good. So if I play this land now, I get to draw an extra card and gain an extra life, but I don't get to flip my other Nissa this turn. I guess it can wait. I'll I'll find better things to do. <laughs> Bam! Nissa Ultimate. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um let's go this turn. We still don't have any of our enchantment removal, which is a Reclamation Sage, Nahiri, and a Woodland Bellower. Those are yet to be drawn, so let's go with Woodland Wanderer and Eile. And then we've got some mana left, with which I guess I'll the Oath of Nyssa. Hey, there's our boy. Holla at you, boy. <laughs> Get those suppression bonds out of here. Um, also, we're really close to 30 uh, life. Sacrifice another creature. Exile target non-land permanent. Activate this ability if you have at least 10 life more than your starting life total. Ooh, kind of another uh, ultimate of sorts I haven't gotten to do. Brilliant Spectrum. So here's the some converge happening. And he tosses Kiora. I mean, you must have something in that hand. Okay. <laughs> the spectrum has become more brilliant. Alright. Uh, let's live the darn dream. One more time. Exile target non-land permanent. Beautiful. Live in the high life with Eilie over here. Get that out of here. <sighs> okay. Darn it. I guess I'm out of dudes.
Nothing. Nada. Zilch. Let's get a monster. Let's defend our planeswalkers. Your turn, buddy! <laughs> uh, man, this deck. It can get crazy. Uh oh. Uh oh. There's something else. Someone else is here. He's going for Nyssa and Soren. Alright. I mean, that's something you can do. Who am I to argue with the big Ulamog? <laughs> but get a clue, dude. Get a clue. You're out of here. <laughs> I don't think I could have ne I mean, do you guys see how I could have killed him quicker? I guess I could have made this emblem last turn instead of doing Soren, but... Oh, clue puns. Clue puns because of Declaration in Stone. Like, Declaration in Stone is the one card that's going to guarantee that we must have clue tokens at the Pro Tour. Uh, at least in Standard. Alright, so I think we got this, guys. We can leave this game. Did it. Mm. Yeah, Ulamog's not that scary. We had plenty of ways to kind of deal. Well, at least two. Two that matter. Declaration of Stone, though. I mean, just that should be in, like, every white deck. That is an Ulamog killer all on its own. Mm -hmm. Got him good. Amen. Ah. Uh. Here we go again. So let's see. Come on, let's uh, get another. Let's get another elf deck. I'm. I still want to know. I want to know if my deck usually loses to elves. That would be a hole, uh, a flaw in the armor. Not that I expect anybody to ever run elves in a competitive event, but they're definitely going to run it online, no matter what you do to it. No matter what you say about it, everybody is going to play elves sometimes. Everybody else sometimes. Did you mention you have a dual blog at some point? I'm trying to round up sites for the subreddit wiki. Yeah, dude, I got a blog. Um, if you're on a computer, the link to it should be right down there. Also, the name of the stream, Haunted Flower Duels Diaries, if you punch that into Google, you should find it. Uh, shouldn't be too hard to find. Haunted Flower is the company my wife and I own, and the blog is a part of the um, website where we sell our t-shirts and such. Because it just had this little uh, option there that was like, blog, and I punch a button, and ba -ja. What up, Mortivore? Thank you, Nighthawk. Way to get in there with the, with the, av with the uh, links. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. 
Are we in? Is it working? Are we gonna battle? Shall we engage in glorious combat? Stay tuned. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. <laughs> I thought we were in last time. Looks like the same dude. And again, Homeless Jace is pretty universal at this point. Uh, some people are getting there. Did anybody else lose rank 40 in Origin Season? Um, I've been rank 0 in Origin Season ever since the Battle for Zendikar update launched because I was affected by a bug on iOS and I am rank 0 in Origin Season forever on Xbox because I didn't own an Xbox at the time. <laughs> so I am permanent rank 0 Origin Season. We are all rank zero. Hate to tell you this, rank not important. Rank not important. Your skill as a player is important. You don't need a badge to prove it. Now, what am I supposed to play this turn? I guess we want to make sure that we wander properly, so I guess I go get white, and then evolving wilds for black next turn while playing an advocate. Or I could advocate now and get another draw step before playing Ranger Evolving Wilds next turn. I like that better. <clears throat> you play the game to play the game and to get better at the game. If you're playing it for a rank, well, you know, just take yourself out for ice cream if you really need a reward. If you uh, win a whole bunch of games in a row, go have some Cold Stone Creamery, pat yourself on the back, and no one will ever be able to take that away from you. No game glitch will ever mess with your ice cream. How's that for an idea? Okay, we want black. We want white. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm focused on rank and origins because of the achievement. Because reasons. Yep. I think we found it because reasons. <laughs> but does that achievement taste like Cold Stone Creamery? Probably not. Just saying. I got Cold Stone. What did you get when you rank 40 <laughs> Oh, man. Esprazoa combo assembled. Do I care? Not really. Don't really care, but we're going to get this down this turn. He's going to get his little uh, beautiful Howling Mind start. <laughs> and then we're going to just declare in stone that it shall not happen again. Esprazoa316 says, I just whooped your ass. <laughs> Somebody mentioned Stone Cold Steve Austin in the chat and I couldn't help myself. I tapped out. I'm just over here twiddling my thumbs. You do whatever you gotta do. You do whatever you gotta do with all that mana. Actually, I'm building this deck on my uh, iPhone because I don't have this deck built on iOS yet, so that's what I'm twiddling my thumbs doing. Oh, we're back. Looks like he finished his turn, and he's all deed up. Um, so what's he gonna do? What's he gonna think? He's gonna—he's th thinking he can trade with my Wanderer. Hmm. 
Yeah, we'll just get Zoa out of the way, and then he can't profitably block Woodland Wanderer. We will hold back the Advocate. I do not want to uh, give that up before it becomes a 4-5. or five. And we just have, like, the aggro curve out going on with Team Vigilance in this deck. Did you win that belt, CGB? You can talk like a wrestler. Thanks. Yeah, I talk like a wrestler. I, just, I watch a lot of wrestling. It's easy for me to talk like a wrestler. I don't know if I quite get the gist of your comment, but I, I, I think I know what you mean. My signature over at No Goblins Allowed for the lols, as it is said now by the kids, is uh, iOS champion uh, insert WWE style title belt here. And that's literally just a fun thing I decided to put in there. Because, hey, if you're going to win, if you're going to win a championship of any, you know, for any of those tournaments, I think you should just put it out there. Like, yo, I won. <laughs> Why the heck not? Maybe you, maybe it looks like bragging. I, it's, it's really more because I want people to remember that we have tournaments and uh, encourage them to play them in the future. But it looks braggadocious, but I think it should be done just to call attention to the fact that we do this stuff. Otherwise, what's the point? What's the point, you guys? Mm -hmm. One, almost finished this deck on iOS. There we go. Oh, we, did we just draw Radiant Flames? Is that what just happened? Oh my gosh, I wasn't even watching. I look up, and what do I see? I see a Radiant Flames in my hand. Sorry, dude. Your time is up. My time is now. You can't see me. My time is now. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's the franchise. Boy, I'm shining now. You can't see me. My time is now. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> um. He's just swinging. I block that. Weird. I mean, I guess that's his way of saying I concede, and my way of saying I'm taking too long because I'm trying to twiddle my thumbs in the, in the background. John Cena sucks. You suck. John Cena sucks. Actually, I, I'm a big fan of John Cena because people hate him. It makes the show more entertaining when he comes out and the crowd boos him. But now we have Roman Reigns for anybody who's keeping up with the product. Now we have Roman Reigns to boo for you wrestling fans. And it, it the hate is legit. <laughs> I mean, that guy that has no redeeming qualities that I can find, except that people buy his t-shirts. I don't know why. <laughs> It's so sad. How's it says, how's it going? You know, when I read your name, I, I try to find reasons that I should be depressed to be empathetic, but actually I'm doing fine. I'm trying to get my gaming in early today. I have to be out tonight, so I may not get back to late. Not sure what's going to happen there. So, got to make sure I get my game on. And uh, we've done well today. Let's see, what have we lost to elves? We lost one game to elves. <laughs> Still one I'm smarting from, because I feel like I'd win that game most of the time. He's muscular and Samoan. Get it together, CGB. He has the Rock's DNA in him somewhere. He's a descendant of the Rock. He must be amazing.
That's right. Take notes. That's what rank looks like above 10. Hey, Coop. How have you liked the game? I think I saw you streaming the other day. I know you're a streamer. Coop McCoy, down here in chat, guys. He has a channel if you want to check it out. Um, yeah. What do you think, dude? Do you like the game? Just trying to get another person's opinion. What's the Xbox uh, meta looking like? It's all over the place. Today I have played... Today I have... Between today and last night, I guess that's all today, I have played Thopters four times, and I have played Green Black three times. I played Green Ramp once, and I played Red Aggro once. I played five color decks three times. So, there you go. Uh, not a big... Uh, not a big... Um, the, the meta is not very targeted right now. It's kind of diverse. And it is weird to still see like the starter decks like Elves and Thopters getting all the play. Glad you like it, Coop. There have been a lot of people complaining about bugs, but I'm still finding ways to play the game and have a good time. I really am. All right. This hand can stay. And we have an untapped green source, so we can lead on the vent. See so you switch blue for black in the Walker's deck. Nope, I did not switch blue for black. This is uh, an update to Random's deck that I'm playing with, Random Names. And uh, I still have the blue deck. Uh, that one is at Magic Duel's Helper. Uh, I haven't posted this list over there yet, but I'm sure I will. I'm sure I'll get to that sometime. Um, today, tomorrow. One of these days, I'll get over there and I'll post this one because so far it's doing well. And one of my goals is to figure out which deck is better and some card choices and that's not easy in a five color deck or, or a five color format a four color deck but I'll, I'll put some work into it we'll get it we'll get it don't you worry we'll get it wow he's gonna discard Tamio's journal to lightning axe my cultivator I feel wonderful about that play I mean, Tamio's Journal can be a problem card, but he got me. The da. Now, what's this thing do? Haste and plus one plus O. Oh. Well, we're gonna get in that thing's way. How long did you have to wait on the phone? So sad. Last time I had to do that, I was on hold, and it took a minute. <laughs> I, I I think I still have the log from that call somewhere. It was like forty some minutes. <laughs> oh, very nice. You got double refunds. I hope their customer service department is really enjoying the explosion of refund requests. Yeah, about 35 minutes. That sounds right, too. So we're going to put these blockers up. If he has a combat trick, we just want to make him use it. We want to get it out of his hand so that he can't use it in combat against these guys, which are much better. Ah, I see. Ah, that's a good combat trick, actually, because it stays on the battlefield. And something I did not consider. And now he's got two, three, Wolfy Wolf. But we're about to get bigger. We don't have red though, so we can only get up to five, five. That sucks. Oh well. Still really big. <laughs> It's worth it. We really needed this expansion. I agree. You know, I'll take I'll take this expansion and all the ups and downs, man. That is why it sucked to not have red mana cuz we already knew about the lightning axe. But he is blowing his whole hand. Gosh. He's still ahead on board though. That's really annoying to me. He didn't pump, so let's see if he has another creature. He's passing the turn. Maybe he's hoping to tag Shambling Vent with a third Lightning Axe. What do you guys think? Lightning Axe number three? Let's play our two threes for two, baby. Fire Impulse! <laughs> Boom! Did it! <laughs> the guy is relentless. Definitely like a werewolf aggro -y deck. Uh, though Tamio's journal makes me wonder what's up with that. And he wants to attack me. I'm happy to block. I've got death touch, buddy. You better be able to go indestructible. 
He's going to pump. Uh, that makes sense, obviously. Um, he should pump again if he has nothing to do, because he has trample. But he doesn't. So uh, I go get my sham... If he had a fiery impulse, he would have used it. So let's go get our shambling vent. Uh, oh, jeez. Oh, no, we did that. How embarrassing. Hopefully it doesn't die anyway. Uh, Frickin' magic. Okay. We'll get it together. It'll be fine. He's got a 4-3 trample. <laughs> yeah, freaking magic. Um, So we can fire up our quagmire and be fine here. Let's go... Uh, well, let's hold back the red. He doesn't need to know we have it. Maybe it'll somehow mess up his play. Alright, we're going to tap mana with a carefulness right now. Now, does this say target wolf becomes indestructible? Ooh, that's bad. Target attacking wolf or werewolf gains indestructible. That's a, that's a tilt. Can't do much about that. Gonna have to draw an answer. Fortunately, I have a deck just full of cards that are better than that card. Just have to draw one. Not always a straightforward endeavor. <laughs> As you can see... So I have to use black. Yeah, I'm going to need the other black source to use the quagmire, so... Maybe I could have sequenced my lands better to make sure I could attack with both. I didn't think about it. More mistakes. This game, if uh, we lose in a close one, is going to be a mistake game. Oath of Landfall. Word. Oath of Lands. Just more lands. We'll just draw lands, lands, and more lands. Hey, our opponent's getting more lands. They want to be able to make all those wolves indestructible by God. I bet he plays all his lands out too instead of holding for lightning axe. Oh, now he's holding back. Let me see this. Target attacking wolf gains indestructible. I wonder if he knows that. What do you guys think? Does he know it? Does he know that? Let's find out. Let's not tap the red. Let's leave white, green, black, red. Okay. What's been your favorite deck to play so far? I've, I've had a lot of fun with the Werewolf deck, but this deck is fun too. Um, pretty much all the decks in their way are fun. Like, can't say that they're not fun. Alright, let's get big. This is too big for your next Lightning Axe, homie. <laughs> and in case you guys uh, didn't want to slow roll your lands in the past, you should definitely slow roll your lands now. Because guess what? As long as you have a land in your hand, it doesn't pass that priority on you. But, yeah, this deck's pretty fun. My other, like, three and four color decks are fun, but I mean, they're all fun. I like, I love playing new cards. I haven't, like, I guess there are some decks that have been not fun. My uh, version of, like, some of my mono white and white green humans decks haven't been very fun. They gotten their butt kicked. Uh, green black delirium hasn't been fun. Yeah, some of the kind of themey things that I wanted to try didn't work. Winter, what's up? So, uh, is that our opponent? Is that our opponent over there? Let's see. Oh, maybe it's some hate mail. Let's see. So now everyone just makes four-color deck filled with rares. R.I.P. fun. <laughs> oh, great. So my opponent's salty. We'll send him a frowny face to Kyle Duncan Wa Duncan Wasser. <laughs> Looks German. Um, <laughs> salty opponent. So, like, this is the only deck I'm playing today because I'm trying to figure out how to make it good. But, I mean, I have played all kinds of decks. And for the most part, I haven't played uh, five color rare decks. In fact, or four color rare decks. This is kind of. I've only played them a tiny bit. So, I think my opponent. It's just unfortunate we had to make them so unhappy. 
<sighs> Especially since they played like way too aggressive, and in my opinion, a very suboptimal wolf deck. It's even funnier that he would be mad at me. But maybe he doesn't have all the cards unlocked, so I'm trying not to be a total jerk about it. <laughs> Yeah, he should have stayed for the maximum tilt. Maybe I'll just send him a screenshot. <laughs> I'll just send him a screenshot. <laughs> like, look what I did to you and your precious wolves. Mortivor, way to get in there. Mortivor's speaking the truth. He sucks. His deck sucks. Yeah. I wouldn't argue with you. I would just try not to. I would try not to say that myself, as uh, you never know who's watching or who's streaming. I've made people very sad because they were, you know, in chat, and I said that their deck sucked. I'm trying to try, trying to try. That sounds weird. Uh, Demir Reanimator. However, the game now crashes. Well, then I guess that makes sense when I'm trying to test against AI. Bugs matter. Uh, take it out on ladder, dude, or test it against me. I mean, we know Wizards wanted to stop people from uh, playing the AI so much. Seems like this is a pretty natural response to that. I drain you. You're down. We'll play you. Activate. Activate. Check out those giant landmans. <laughs> Get in there for lethal. Uh, uh. Hello, Babs. Welcome to the party. We got our first hate mail of the season. Anybody want me to read that again? From our opponent. So now everyone just makes four color deck filled with rares. R.I.P. Fun. What is not fun about this deck? You get to play really big awesome things. Oh wait, he replied. It bothers me that they added both new sets, but no one plays the archetypes. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Stop being a Timmy. It's got nothing on dollar boys. No RIP fun. We're sending some messages back and forth. Don't worry, we're not flaming or anything. turning into class warfare. <laughs> he only had 6k gold, so he's still missing a lot of cards and he's building deck archetypes and I'm I'm he want he was like, "Did you I he was he seemed to be mad that I bought all my cards, but I let him know I had 24 uh k gold from grinding. I didn't I didn't buy any gold this season." I don't communicate with lower ranks. <laughs> you guys are jerks. <laughs> I like it. 
I mean, you guys can get away with that. I did tell him about the stream, so maybe he'll pop in. <laughs> trying to be nice over here. Trying to be, trying to be um, civilized. I did let him know that I also have a werewolves deck that did really good, and that I've made over 20 new decks since the expansion came out with the new cards. So, he just got unlucky. He played against my Four Color Walkers deck, and he's really salty about it. I imagine he played against a few other decks like that recently. <laughs> it's in the campaign. The Oaths are here. <laughs> BBB, I'm not that mean. I was just letting him know because he seemed... He actually seemed curious about... um like the cards I bought and the archetypes I might play. So I let him know. Maybe he'll pop in. And then you guys can uh, let him have it live. So this hand, we have 26 lands. We could get screwed, but we have at least two playables. I'm going to try it. Um, could be... This could just be asking for too much. Being civilized is for scrubs who lose at magic. I am a scrub and I do lose at magic, Babs. So be it. <laughs> so this can get me white. Or green would get Nissa. The double green on Nissa is actually one of the biggest problems. So I do I do think she can get cut. I mean, we ultimated her once, but it doesn't do too much just hanging out. I stopped playing. Oh, we got more. We got more. Are you guys ready? Um, I stopped playing because Zendikar was boring to all, bad word, and Green Ramp was too strong. Don't know how you put up with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> dedication. <laughs> One word, dedication. <laughs> I don't play other games. This is my game, and I am dedicated. <laughs> Dear, I'll just bend over and let wizards have their way with me, and I don't even complain. Um, so, let's see. Green is the most likely color that will draw, so I'd hate to fetch it. White would give us Avacyn. Um, but this is a tap land anyway, so we'll play our tap land. We'll attack with Advocate, and we'll see if he blocks. If he does, maybe we'll Oath of Chandra. He put up with it by being the scum that played ramp. Amen. You know, can't beat him, join him. Magic is hard to play with a stick up your butt. <laughs> Let's just say my seat gets a lot more uncomfortable if I take that mentality. We're going to go ahead and oath here because uh, we have nothing else to do with our turn. And I just want to have it out there when I do cast my planeswalkers. I don't foresee him playing something I need to oath, but I could be wrong. This Oath of Chandra may be one of those plays we look back on and say, I should have saved it for a kindly stranger. <laughs> Shit talking was 50% of the fun. You guys are sick. You have a problem. <laughs> Double white, so green. And here we go. See if he wants to block again. <laughs> you guys are gross. I was always wondering why everybody was mad that Steam doesn't have a chat anymore. I've always been relieved that the chat was removed because all that ever happened is people talk crap to me. But now I see it. It's you guys who talk the crap. You you miss having a way to just tear at people for no good reason. <laughs> you 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 poor sick sick people <laughs> you should probably see someone about that but I still love you <laughs> let's make plants we could also pump our guys Ooh, ooh, that would be so mean like if we plus if we minus Nissa we can attack and he can't really well he can block what am I kidding? If But we can attack with Eile, then he can counterattack. Sylvan Advocate would eat one of his creatures. And we'd lose Nyssa? But would that be fine because we'd have a 3-4 and a 3-4? And he'd take two damage? I think I like it. I think I like it. 
Earn your keep, Nissa. Show me. Show me you're not just for the aggro decks. Prove yourself. <laughs> Ninety-nine percent of the time it was <laughs> good luck, have fun, GG. But the one percent was glorious. <laughs> I think that they removed chat because of Acid Moss. I think they playtested and were like, this is a problem. We've got people threatening each other's families every time this card gets cast. Dedication. <laughs> Alright, here's that bitter revelation. So, the thing that we can do now because of our Nissa down tick is we can Radiant Flames away as Kindly Stranger before it owns my face. <laughs> Build better deck scrub. Get good. <laughs> Atta girl. You tell him, Babs. <laughs> uh, for me, it was 90% of the time game freeze on lethal spamming chat like GG Noob can't play magic <laughs> as the Goblin Grenade went off. Oh my gosh, you guys are just gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I could blow out his kindly stranger with Archangel Avacyn and make him spend another turn and perhaps have an even greedier Radiant Flames I could also flip Avacyn if I had a plant token to Radiant Flames away this is so disgusting you guys I think this is absolutely filthy um, we don't uh, I guess we'll, if he double blocks, we can have us in on our turn, but then he has Kindly Stranger that he can use, but we can kill the Kindly Stranger. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. <laughs> Takes the damage. Okay. We're going to... Seriously, we're going to blow up this Kindly Stranger activation so hard. <laughs> oh, it's going to get not it's just going to get nasty in here with Archangel, man. This ain't right. This ain't the way it should be. By the way, um I played the green black delirium side of this matchup with uh the other night and it was about this ugly for me. I got my butt handed to me by the four color planeswalker deck. Avacyn, baby, she nasty. It takes the damage on the chin or it gets the Avacyn again. <laughs> he goes to five. Jeez, oh, Pete. The guy, the guy is just taking a beating. Here it comes, the 4 Does he have that delirium now? He's got it. Yeah, bring it. You, you're going to... Oh, he's bringing it, too. Oh, Oh, that's cold. Oh, it's so cold in here. It's so cold, you guys. <laughs> oh, man. That ain't right. That ain't right. That's too much. <laughs> Let's commit Nissa aside. And that's that. <laughs> so the mana base has been really good in this deck. We've kind of been able to get away with just evolving wilds and sylvan rangers without explosive vegetation or any other like funky things, and I, I actually think the lands have worked well. So, um, yeah. As far as changes, I mean, that was the second time that Nissa's done good stuff, but I mean, it didn't do good stuff against a tough deck, so I don't know. The double green is a little obnoxious. I'm not exactly looking to have double green, but if I'm gonna, 
that early in the game, unlike turn three. But if I'm going to have double a, a color double, it's probably going to be double green. I have like 18 sources, so it is reasonable to expect. None of Disciples' abilities work. There you go. I can't confirm. I haven't played that card since uh, update. I, I took that card out of my deck and I put Jace in. <laughs> I love my Disciple and all, but man, that thing is annoying to use all those abilities. And sometimes you're just playing it as a 5-mana 3-4 because you're under the gun. And it's very sad. Whereas Jace, you can play it at, for 5-mana and at least take something off the board with the bounce ability. How did none of the abilities work? How come Jace can now uh, tap for... We can keep this. How come Jace uh, can minus and the cards never get flashback exiled? But... <laughs> but apparently Disciple doesn't work at all. Also, Blight Herder can process, but the cards that get exiled never go back into the graveyard. <laughs> Didn't know if you guys knew that. They just stay exiled. Oh, there's just so much trouble. Mm -hmm. So we played the green source uh, tapped first in case we draw any basic we could cast Sylvan Ranger on our turn, but it didn't work out that way. Our opponent's going to Ranger. If they are playing Planeswalkers and we are playing Planeswalkers and we miss a land drop and they don't, it's going to get saucy. Oh, nope. Looks like green blue. Going and getting his double blue. Hey, red. Not bad. I want to run Nyssa out here. It's not like Green Blue can really do anything about Nyssa. But if I play a Ranger here, I can definitely hit Arlen on curve. So I guess we'll Ranger. So what do we need? We have double black, single green, single white, single red. Uh, double white, I guess, is what we need the most in that compendium. Because we have Gideon and we have Archangel Avacyn to be uh, concerned about. Whereas double um, red is one card, which is Chandra. Yep. So maybe we're up against a blue ramp type deck. The kind of thing I ran a lot last season. That deck, in my opinion, got a lot worse when it lost Acid Moss. I mean, that, that deck was an Acid Moss deck, baby. Even more so than any other ramp deck, that deck just was all about moss spam. <laughs> Everything you could do to moss the opponent more. Alright Arlen, get on my board. Get, get Wolf out for me. Let's see what Arlen Cord does. Have you guys gotten to play much with Arlen Cord? Anybody in there not seen Arlen Cord do her thing? Let's uh, zoom her in since we have nothing better to do right now. Plus ones and tramples, minus for a lightning bolt, and uh, you get emblem at negative six, which I don't know if anybody will ever pull that off, but I'm sure somebody with dedication can. And this is her other side. So she can flip back and forth. She really has like five abilities. She's crazy. So our opponent is going top rope ramp. So the best way to deal with an op somebody just ramping hard is to try to get a lot more on the board, a lot better than they do. So what do we want to do? Do we want to plus Arlen or do we want to flip Arlen? I think we just want to zap him. I think we want to zap him. So what else do we want to do? We probably want to play Eilie and we probably want to play Ranger. Because then we can even leave a mana up. Now what do we want Ranger for? Now we have double red. Double black, double white. I guess it doesn't matter very much what we ranger for. Let me try to think if there's anything I'm missing. Um, another white would make sure... Or, ah, we'll get a swamp. We just want to also be able to make sure that we can activate our shambling vents easy.
a little lightning bolt the face and just try to do damage so that we can also make a t another token or give a creature haste next turn if he wipes the board. And here we go. We don't have the best uh, ramp hand. We don't have any of the like big power walkers like Ob and Sorin to just grind out value them. So that could be a problem. And that Hydra could be a big problem. And now he's got Jace too. So he's off and running. Let's see. We've got a Death Touch. We've got a Death Touch Critter. That we can get in there with if we want to plus Arlen. Mm, nothing to hit with that. We got two oaths. Oath one, oath two. All right. Takes it. Atta boy. Clever girl. This is playing into a sweeper, but he's green and blue, so I don't think I have to worry about it. If he has a displacement wave, there's not a lot I can do about that. But there's no reason not to play Nyssa if he has displacement wave, you see what I'm saying? Alrighty, here he goes. So he's going to have an 11, he's going to have a 13, he can make it unblockable. He's at 9 though. I can attack him more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Like, I have an 11 point attack, so maybe he has fog? And he's not. He's not moving. He's not budging. He sees it. He knows I can get lethal on him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is that lethal? <laughs> He'll have to block it, and then he'll take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When I flip Nissa from the Oath of Chandra, beautiful. Oh, he has um, he has Lumbering Falls though. Gotta watch out. Gotta watch out. So if he activates the falls and blocks with it. Now he's not dead. Tense. Pretty tense. And we don't want him to kill Nyssa either. So we're not going to do it that way. So attacking with everybody is not going to fly. I don't have a way to deal like one more damage to it. Nope. So I guess we'll flip Nissa now. We could try to call his bluff, but I'm sure he would block with Lumbering Falls. There he is. Too bad I can't zap that. Do I make the 4 4 here? I mean, he's got the frickin' Rogue's Passage. Do I just go wide and really hope to run him over? Guess so. I've got Eily, so I can survive a lot of things.
And we're going to leave mana up so I can use Eile if I need to. Just going wide. Got a good, got a, got a battle. Oh, hello. He's going after my walkers. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. We're at 20. We can go up to 26. We can go up to 30. Okay, we're good. I got a plan. I think I have the mana to do it too. Two white, two black. Yep. So we go up to 24. We go up to 30. We're going to untap and we're going to exile both of his creatures. If we tap right. Got to be careful. White, black, green, and we still have white, black, green. All right, what else you got, buddy? Give me some love. Did you like that turn? Let's see what he can follow up with. Maybe he'll guys revenge me and then I can't exile anything, but he's at five, so I could just kill him. Okay, he's got Plated Crusher. If he has one more mana... Nope, he's got Evolutionary Leap. Okay, he's pausing me. So I can't quite get him. Now can I get him? One, two, three, four, one, two, three. I need to leave a black and a white open. Can I do that? Nope, double white. Doesn't work that way. But this will do two damage. At the beginning of your end step, if a planeswalker entered the battlefield under your control, it deals two damage. So this, w this is good for two. But I can't attack, I can't give this vigilance either. I can't attack with shambling vent and Get in. I can get him down to one. Or no. I see it. I see it. Right? Yes, I see it. Okay. So this is going to do two damage. So he's effectively at three. So we can make the emblem. And here we go. We already have an Oath of Chandra on the battlefield, so we don't need to play the Oath of Chandra. Nope. Yep. Got there. Good job, Hawk. You saw it too. Uh, that was a good game. And we took down the mighty Bramp Menace, Ulamog and all. So if you guys wondered about, you know, can the, if you guys wondered if the new cards could compete with ramp, we did. We competed with ramp. If you're liking, if you guys are having a good time with me, uh, today we're working on our four color planeswalker deck. I have a lot of decks I want to share with you guys. I've got a lot of decks to still build and show and play. And I play duels just about every day. So you have nothing to lose hitting the uh, follow or subscribe button or whatever it is. The little heart thing on Twitch. You may as well follow me if you're liking what you see, because all I do is play duels, and I have a lot more decks to show you. So so follow along. Oh, Avocado wants some. We are on John Cena rules, you guys. If you want some, come get some. <laughs> now, yesterday I did try to connect to the Avocado, and there were struggles, but we eventually got it to work, and it looks like the struggles have passed. <laughs> BBB is back, so we can start playing Magic again. We, we just did nothing. We waited for you, dude. Actually, uh, I'm joking with you, and I think your sarcasm level can handle that uh, from what I've heard of you. Um, so you missed a really good game. We played against Blue Ramp. It had a 12-12 um, 
Oran Reef Hydra, it had Jace, it had uh, Explosive Vegetation and Nissa's Pilgrimage Curve, and it Ulamogged us and wiped out two of our Planeswalkers, and we still missed. Or uh, still won, I should say. Oh, and Plated Crusher and Lumbering Falls. We still won. We did it. We got there. So, um, I don't... I think I can do better. Okay. This is, this is pretty good color-wise. I wonder if I want to play the Cultivator when I have a Radiant Flames. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was a blue ramp, you know? It's it's like blue-green ramp into Ulamog and stuff. And we got to... Uh, we pitched our Woodland Wanderer and a Nissa token to get to 30 life. And then we used Eile to exile his Hydra and his Ulamog in one turn. And then we uh, took it uh, a turn later. Took it down. <laughs> so Eile, man, Eternal Pilgrim. Probably not a card people slot right into this deck, but that's the second time I've kind of wrecked Ramp and exiled uh, Eldrazi's by getting Eile over 30. And... Like, I haven't ultimated Zorin, but I've ultimated Eile twice since this update dropped, so maybe it's not as fringe as people think. He hasn't played anything, so we'll get our Cultivator down, but this hand is pretty anemic. I'm going to need to draw a Planeswalker, or else we're just going to be sitting around, and if our opponent's playing any kind of ramp or anything, we're going to be doing nothing while they do a lot of something. Uh, control, same thing. Not proactive. Not being proactive against control is bad, MK. <laughs> what life gain do you run other than Soren here? Uh, Eile. <laughs> I run Eile. Eile can sack a 6-6 six, six Woodland Wanderer. It can sack uh, the 4-4 four, four that Nissa makes. It can sack something that's been buffed by Cord. And yeah, we, we do have Vents. Vents is in the house. So we want to keep hitting lands that are varied because Woodland Wanderer. But the, I mean, we we really only got Eile up there that game because of because we had some critters to sack some big ass critters so we could play her here I think she's just gonna die our opponent is clearly uh, they're clearly a uh, blue black super control and we have a horrible hand against them so bounce this is your boy root for your boy the avocado um, I don't think anything gets better by doing nothing so we'll just play it horribly awry we don't have man lands and we don't have planeswalkers, and that's really the formula if we're going to battle. Oh, we, we ate a spell shrivel. That could have eaten a walker, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> Avocado. He, I met him a few nights ago. He plays a lot. He's a decent player. So I'm sure he'll do just fine. Oh, he wants to eat our hand. Right? That how that works? Hey, there's a man land. We needed that. All right. So, um, target opponent exiles a card from their hand as a sorcery. Well, I can't abide by such behavior. I have no interest in exiling cards from my hand. Sorry. And dimensional infiltrator. All righty. So he's got. Some interesting little dorks to go with his control shell. But he's down to two cards in hand. Let's see if we can draw out... Oh, I mean, I'm just going to Radiant Flames. And he might be able to bounce, so he's going to target me with exiling thingies at end step. So we want to at least make him pay mana. So let's start with attacking with the vents and seeing if he has anything up his sleeve for him. He has one colorless, so he only gets one crack at getting rid of our... Uh, 
Or, um, he only gets one crack at bouncing his guy. That's what I'm trying to say. Hey, man. Glad to see you streaming. Enjoy your content. Thank you. Appreciate that. And if you enjoy the content, hit follow. <laughs> he hits Eily. Boo. But at least it wasn't a planeswalker. <laughs> Do got all three reflector mages in top ten, naturally. There you go. Uh oh. Go big or go home. Well, he hit no lands, but he exiled Soren. I'm sure he's not depressed. Go big or go home. <laughs> Let's see if we can scare him. Take this. We do need him to block it. <laughs> we need him to block it. He doesn't. Okay. Do we Radiant Flames to get rid of the Infiltrator? No. No, we do not. Four five. Brar. And he apparently has all instants because priority just skipped him. Pretty hardcore. So we can't activate vents and attack with it and uh, cast languish. That's kind of a negative. A little bit of a tilt. See what he's got. He's gonna infiltrate me. He's gonna miss. Huh, way to get my declaration stone though. He's he's rocking my face on that. Alright. One, two, three, four. I need to play this land first so I don't get spell shriveled. And we go for it. There's the spell shrivel. Hey! Yay, I didn't embarrass myself. I was pretty terrified that I was going to, uh, you know, leave a land in my hand at some point and get spell shriveled. Mm -mm. Uh, telling time in response. Okay, you got it. He certainly took the hard way of getting rid of that Oblivion Sower and Infiltrator, but he seems down to a bunch of answers. And they sh I think they're instant speed, so they're like counter spells, I guess? So that means we don't play Oath of Gideon this turn. He has instant speed answers, but he doesn't have answers to the man land, so these are counter spells, right? These are counter spells or targeted removal that doesn't apply, and I'm having trouble thinking of what those would be, so counter spells. So let's just manland punch him until the cows come home. Or another dimensional infiltrator. That could be a negative if we're firing up Quagmire, but we're going to do it anyway. Titan's presence. Ooh, the Mog! Hello! That's bad. Okay. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's bad. I, it looks like he still has a ways to go, though. I think he's on six. He didn't get any lands off that Oblivion Sower. Seven. <laughs> the countdown is on. <laughs> the countdown is on. Nahiri, what do you do? Well, you can loot away some of this garbage in my hand. But you also probably get countered. Ooh. So we can do this, and we can uh, Hissing Quagmire. And we can leave up Spell Shrivel Mana. So well, let's do it. Resolves. Love it. Okay. Loot. We didn't play Oath first because we're still uh, worried about Spell Shrivel. That is the problem. Oath Anissa. We can wait. <laughs> I 
I mean, he's probably got another Spell Shrivel. What else would you have? He's got Ulamog, he's got Spell Shrivel, and there's probably one more card. There's one mystery card that is, uh, it's hard to tell what it is. But there's the Oath of Chandra doing damage. Maybe a Warping Whale? Yeah, it could be a Warping Whale. That, that hasn't had a target for a minute. All right, let's loot. We're almost to where we can throw our woodland bellower on the table, and we're going to beat his, uh... We're going to beat him to being able to do that, compared to his Ulamog. Um, I guess we'll Oath of Gideon? Because this goes right into the Spell Shrivel, we've already decided we're going to play around. One, two, three, four. Uh, let's start with Oath of Nyssa, I guess. They could be horribly awry. That's another card that would make sense from the way the game's gone for a while. Hello! <laughs> I choose you, Pikachu. But we're not going to play it into the Shrivel. Now, this also, we can play and still have mana up. Alright. Warping Whale. Making a Scion. So, Warping Whale was there. Look at that oath. Look at, we've got the uh, super friends taking the oath over here. <clears throat> yeah. Uh. All right. We're going to do it. So he needs his blocker. He needs his blocker. I can activate one, two, three, leaving up four. So that's not enough for Avison. Chandra Flame Caller. He can spell shrivel it. Omnixless. He can spell shrivel it. So, yep, this is the way it goes. I wish it had Vigilance. I wish my land had Vigilance. Alright, he's down and out. Nahiri got there. How about that? Nahiri got the job done, baby. Nahiri living large with the other planeswalkers. She's like, I have value. I belong in the club. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah, he's on my friends list, so he's just been inviting me to play a lot lately. But, I mean, he he's a pretty good player. We've seen him win some games. Like, in two out of three, he usually beats me. Uh, I usually beat him two, and he usually beats me one. So... That's competitive. That's good. It's not... He's got his collection, you know what I mean? I think he's got most of it. So it's a lot better in most cases than playing random. Here he spits on the club? I don't think so. So what do we have here? There's a Japanese streamer doing magic duels with 154 viewers. Maybe I shouldn't even say that. You guys will all bail on me. I just never seen this guy. Somebody that you know, Babs, by chance? Does you know the Japanese? Or maybe that's not Japanese. You can correct me if it's Chinese. Thought I saw. Word I recognized. But I can be an idiot. So we got our mana right, Pilgrim Languish. And we've got a man land. And on the play, I think we can keep it. So. 
white. We definitely we want to fetch a red. We've got black, and we want to fetch a black. So we'll get the black first in case we draw a way to play um, uh, uh, Eilie next turn. <laughs> well, he's not playing anything right now. He's got 154 viewers and his screen is black. So, uh, yeah, we got more magic going on. Hey, we drew perfect. So we could cast Eilie, but damn. So thank you for hanging out with me. Or... <laughs> I've kind of got his stream on, but I guess I don't need the sound if I don't understand what's being said. Dude's got a following. I wonder if he usually plays duels or if it's like a, a side thing. Typically I find they are side things. Alright. It looks like he might be playing the same deck. And if that's the case... I think we just want Quagmire so we can attack with it next turn, because the man lands were really good against him. Man lands were really tight. Ugh. All right, so black, green. So we want to play this. And he's stuck on mana, so let's just turn things sideways. <laughs> I don't know, I'm curious. I almost want to stop playing and go watch a guy who has 150 some viewers for duels, but at the same time he's just chatting. I don't see him playing any magic at all. I see no duels happening. Is it okay if I link to the wiki page I'm working on for the subreddit? I am looking for more sites, YouTube channels to be added. Uh, is it okay if I link to the wiki page? You mean here in the chat? You can do that. That's cool. Yeah, he's he has a chair. I don't have a chair. I'm. Uh, this is why I'm not as cool. I'm on a couch. You guys, I'm just couching. Just couching this thing. That's why. That's why everybody's into him. Alright. Let's try to Oath. S spell Shrivel. Guess what? I can pay. I don't know if you noticed. I think I do want to, since I might get a really good spell. And I'm happy to eat his Spell Shrivel. Yeah! There we go. Planeswalkers. Love it. And here comes Eilie. <laughs> Thanks for adding my site. I, or I, I'm guessing you added my site. I think I talked to you earlier, but appreciate it. It is good to be. Uh, it, it is good to be a part of the community. It's good to have uh, people interested in what you do. Uh, it's more than I ever expected. I started writing about this game in July last year, and I didn't know if anybody would care. I was just kind of doing it for myself. And here we are, having fun, playing magic. Thanks for the help. I really, um, sorry. I guess he's Chinese. My bad. But that's how it is. Oh, ooh, he just played. Yes, he did just play that. Um, but if we play Eily right here, Dimensional Infiltrator gets to pressure it. So I guess we're plussing, but that's fine because it makes the clock even faster. All right. <laughs> Mammo got to resolve, and now he's offline, so maybe he's done playing duels. What time is it over there, Babs, if you're still around?
I was just curious to see what a guy who has 146 viewers playing duels, I, I want to see what kind of decks he builds, you know, he must have some serious appeal. Oh well, it looks like he's not going to hang around, looks like he's done for the day. Okay, Eile goes down to Oblivion Strike. We'll go get another black with this ranger. Let me make sure that it's not exiled or else that would be embarrassing. Oops, not what I meant to do. Okay, so we'll go get the, we'll go get the swamp. We'll plus Arlen on the ranger and we'll attack with the quagmire as well. Maybe he's doing like a card preview show like PP and I did. Maybe. Who knows? See, this is me playing around priority, firing up my uh, man land before using my planeswalker. You also don't lose priority as long as you have a planeswalker on the battlefield with an ability you can use. Just so you know. The more you know. <laughs> and now he's going blocker detail. Yep. Don't think he has a choice either. So now we want to flip Arlen so we can lightning bolt him to death if she survives one more turn. So if we're going to do that, we're definitely going to do this. And attack with this. And I guess we can also cast this. So if we don't, if he wants to counter this, we don't want him to be able to bounce his infiltrator. And he might not be able to do both. So this kind of forces him to trade. It also gives us the chance to threaten lethal by plussing Arlen if it resolves. So we'll go for this. Resolves. All right, we'll go for the plus. <laughs> Nighthawk, that is the best tech. That is the best uh, tech I have heard. He plays around st stream sniping by not having a screen. Why didn't I think of this? It's brilliant. Ah, uh, there's a warping whale. So now... He oh, I still have a land I can play. Um, so now he can uh, block this. Go to two. Lose his infiltrator. Sweep the board. I make a token. Uh, nope. I'm just gonna attack with the ranger. If he goes to two, then the quagmire attack is lethal, and he always has to keep a blocker up for it. And I don't want the quagmire to go anywhere. I don't wanna, cause then it turns on his sweeper to save him for another turn. Green seems to be where the most likely bo mana bottleneck could come from. <laughs> All right, infiltrator, what you infiltrating? Another turn of trying to stay alive, looks like. Let's see what he's got now. If he exiles a land, he can bounce it and replay it, but then he's tapped out and he dies to the attack. So, 
Yeah, he takes the clue. Not gonna target the little critter again. Oh, Titan's presence, okay. Does he have another warping whale? If he does, could get ugly. I don't have anything else to use the mana for. He has another warping whale, he'll buy another turn. Guess I should just flipped Arlen a long time ago. There's the warping whale. Staying alive! Live, live, Pop that clue. Pass that turn. Uh, yep. So he concedes. Got it. Wow. Whew. He sure was fighting. He missed, he had some land hiccups that game, and he never got to. He, he definitely didn't get off his land problems, which is too bad for him. And we kind of showed that too many lands aren't that bad in this game because you got the man lands to apply all that pressure. Let's see if he wants to invite me again. If we want to do game three. Sending him a message saying game three question mark you often win game three and he often does <clears throat> I have lands now wait I can play my card since the update instead of sitting on two to three mana what sorcery is this oh you're just making more moss jokes just never ends. I should just just change your name to Acid Moss so I remember what you're talking about because nobody's going to know what Acid Moss even means in a couple months. It's going to be relegated to the junk drawer of Duel's history. Like people who are salty about the uh, one mana 6-6 six, six flying lifelink and two-headed giant out of Celestial Light for one mana. Alright, all the tap lands, but good amount of action, but no red. And a bit too slow for my flavor. Interesting. We'll try it. Also the tap lands, but a little more flexibility. No removal though, but we know what we're up against. We're up against black, blue, Take your frickin' time control with Warping Whales and Titan's Presence and Eldrazi types. Always has the gold. Like, is that three games in a row with a uh, Dimensional Infiltrator on two? Or no, it wasn't on two in the first game. I haven't been very impressed, though. I mean, it's not like he's really been able to pressure me or do much with that card. I don't think that it's... I don't think that's the right shell, you know, for that card. I think the deck has to be more aggressive to make use of that boy. So, um, shall we get countered? I guess we just play for the best.
probably has a whale, but he doesn't have a colorless source yet. So that's a, that's important to keep in mind. He might have like warping whales, titans presence, but he doesn't have a, have a source to uh, cast them with. And he didn't counter this last turn. So curious to see what happens. Could just go for Obnixilus, but I think I want to go for Woodland Wanderer, and if I think first I want to attack with my Cultivator and try to draw some attention, draw some fire. Hmm. Nope. Um. So if we want to use our mana this turn, we can play Ranger and Cultivator number two. That does set us up for a language, but he'd have to take out his own infiltrator, so I think I'm okay with that. We got green, green, white, white, red, red, black. I guess we go get another black in case our cultivators die. Have you played your colorless deck on stream yet? No, I haven't. I really should bust that out, shouldn't I? Deck's awesome. I might be. I might just be saying that. Yeah, I should probably put that together. <laughs> spirits. <it's, laughs> spirits are spirits. Uh, oh, you've been playing the colorless deck? Uh, uh, yeah, tell me about it if you don't mind, you know? There's that language. He had to tap man out to do it. Boom. So that played out just like I, I couldn't ask that to play out much better. And I think he probably knew. He probably knew I was going to resolve something amazing. Now we went for uh, Ob because walkers are harder for control decks to remove and Woodland Wand, which is a card we've seen from him. So that's the play. Here comes Blight Herder with nothing in exile. That's that's a bummer for him. So we will tick down and kill that. And we will make a great big woodland wanderer, so he has to deal with that as well. And we'll evolve our wilds. We've got red, 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 green. Don't really need more red. Uh, I guess green. We'll make sure we don't get bottlenecked there. Even though most of our lands do produce green. It is hard to control a Planeswalker deck. It is just... It is a tough proposition for any deck. Ah, to tap right. Make sure I'm not getting spell shriveled. Titan's presence. There you go. Ooh, the Mog! It's taken you too long to cast that Ulamog, though. Rabble was saying the mana leaves little room for error. Is that true? Um, I'm having tremendous success with the mana. There was only one game today that could have gone better. We played Chandra a turn later than we absolutely would have want than we wanted to. One turn later, because we had to fetch up a double red. But I like whatever my mana base is. I'm telling you, I'm not having troubles. Maybe if you're trying to build a 24 mana base, but I'm running 26, and my life is beautiful for it. Alright. I guess we might need the other black. Black and a green open, yep. Black and a white open, yep. So let's go for Nahiri. 
Yep. I guess he figured it out. I can pay, dude. I can pay. Let's attack for more knowledge. I'm keeping my land untapped. Land can go Ranger. Um, let's see if we can draw a spell shrivel on this to open up the path for Chandra. And for Eile. Yeah, he's gonna spell shrivel it. Okay. Uh, let's try Eile. See if he wants to spell shrivel that too. Nope. Uh -huh. Um, I don't know if Broken Concentration is something he puts in his deck. I don't think that that's a really obvious card to play. It's hard to say. Uh, some people just like Spell Shrivel for the Exile. Like, Spell Shrivel fits his deck because he has Blight Herder, if you recall. So, I think that's why you'd play Spell Shrivel there. Uh, two mana open. Alright. Three mana open. But still can't quite cast Chandra here. We know that one of the cards in hand is Ulamog. It's Sylvan Advocate. Okay. Um, let's turn him sideways. Oh yeah, it definitely screws him here now. Uh, it definitely does. I think... Um, yeah, I don't think the process ingest thing is quite where you want to be. I would much rather be on uh, what you were talking about. Let's see if we can draw another spell shrivel with this. Okay. I believe Broken Concentration is the Madness one. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Bye bye, sire. Hello, Bellower. Nahiri for the win again. We could also Chandra there, but don't have to. We'll even get in with a plant token. Ugh, did it. Send some friendly messages. All righty. What time is it? It's almost four o'clock. I'm gonna take a quick break and go get some food or a drink or something, and I'm also gonna check with my wife what time she wants to leave the house. So I'll come back and check on this in a minute, and if I'm gonna turn the stream off, I'll let you know. So I'm just gonna step out for a second.
Okay, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for your patience. I am back. I've got about um, 40 minutes, like half an hour or something like that. I was going to build the colorless deck and take that for a spin, but it would take some time to put together. So let's just try to get one or two more games and stick to our uh, Planeswalker theme, and then maybe we'll have some time to discuss uh, what we learned today about this deck. <laughs> ah. Hey, got right in. Uh, finding games has not been dramatically hard today, which is very nice for a change. We haven't stared at the searching for players very much. Now that I've said that, I've probably jinxed it, but such is life. How many games have we had? Well, actually, my notes don't count all my games. It only counts the ones that were at least the opponent seemed to have a deck and a theme and a plan as opposed to the ones that, like, never play their third land or quit and never cast a spell or have, you know, 90 card decks. 90 card do nothing deck. So that guy who played like one cleric of the forward order and that was his whole game, like that that isn't on here. That hand is inexcusable. I mean, eh. Okay, so we drew an untapped land. We're still on three colors, not four, so we need to find a black source for Big Daddy. But we'll at least be able to, I think, put up a fight while we try to get there. Our opponent is uh, on a 77 card stack, leading off with a shambling vent. Is it black white allies? Is it black white vampires? Is it both because he couldn't make up his mind? Let's find out. That's not a black source. Would love to have one for next turn, though. Get in there, Team Vigilance. <laughs> I do love Woodland Wanderer in the deck. It's a card I wasn't sure about, but it hasn't been Reflector Mage yet today. So, in fact, we haven't been Reflector Mage yet today. Is he going to miss a land drop? Oh, Declaration's down. <gasps> Get a clue. Yes, 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 yes. Do it. Uh, there's a black, but wouldn't I rather play Woodland Wanderer this turn? But then I don't get to play Soren on time. He's low on mana. Can I take a turn off to fix my mana base to get a 6-6 six, six Wanderer instead of a 5-5? Five, five? What does a 6-6 six, six do that a 5-5 five, five doesn't? He could have um, Fleshbag Marauder if he hits one more land. And he could have Reprisal, so it's all the same if he has that. Let's just get it out there. Maybe we delay playing Sauron, maybe we don't. Nighthawk! Wow, that's a real uh, that's a real endorsement. Life gain is amazing. I'm undefeated at rank 3. Do it, baby! <laughs> what was that about lower rank communication? <laughs> you guys are funny. I love it. Um, Get in there, big papa. Big daddy wanderer. Do you think 24 lands is enough when you're running 77 cards? Our opponent might. Now there's some flesh bag protection. <laughs> Way to get it, Yonner. So he's Abzan, Abzan fat sack. Um, not really a chance of a celestial flare, but. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Soren's not coming down, but here he can. 
Do it. Would I want to discard my land? Not when it means I can play Sora next turn. How about Radiant Flames? I'm not going to need that Radiant Flames, I don't think. So, I guess we attack first. GG, play to win, scrub. Yeah, man. Oh, there's an anguish I'm making. Nice. Got me. Did it. Hey, pay to win, scrub. <laughs> He's like, how do you think I got these 77 cards? I put my money down. Oath of Nyssa. Awesome. Just what I needed. I guess it's you. No, we're going to continue playing now. Come on, we, we're not done. pitch go black cuz you never go back and here we go bounce will you stop you know shifting the meta with your epic 72 card stack it's just it's just twisting he's bellows lizard like real man <laughs> Yeah, that's right. He um, he he's like doing the black white removal on me for sure. He got anguish and declaration of stone, but now he's got red. I guess he's five color. <laughs> Are you five color or four color there? Um, bounce. <laughs> You're since he's net decking you. Can you give me some insight on how I can handle this game? I don't think I will need the Reclamation Sage, but I'm not sure. And I don't really have a way to get it back out of the graveyard, so I think it's this guy getting looted. Okay. Let's get big. More tokens. Now that I've seen that, I, I'm just, you know, I would attack with my O1s, but I'm scared. I'm just scared. Um, let's just save this Evolving Wilds. Oh, wait, Nahiri's on 8. We're going to suicide her next turn if she lives, so no need to worry. Get our double white. <clears throat> Who are you inviting to be your new apprentice there, Bounce? <laughs> and what does it mean I have to do? Play Axe Bane Stag, since you say Axe is amazing? I know what you're talking about, by the way. <laughs> oh boy. The princess is here. Sierra, this beat is automatic. Yep. Not a, not a funky fresh. <sighs> Let's get crazy on the AI, cause we can. Doing it all, doing it all. Overkill in effect. Rawr! <laughs> Can't really even put that in the notebook because I don't know what to call his deck. Babs, are you reporting on your own game when you say mana screwed and priority screwed or are we talking about our opponent who uh, just got trounced? Working against that priority is hard. That's another reason I don't really play the campaign. I just get out here in the wild. There are like 
there's so many things in that campaign that appear to get screwed by priority. I was watching Hakeem's video, and it was just, it was just stupid. Like, whatever that three three is that adds three red to your mana pool. What a horrible card to put in the game if you know you're gonna, it, you know, if you're gonna have a priority bug. Like, wow. Wait, did he lose a life from Soren drawing a land? No, I don't think so. If he did, I missed that. Wasn't supposed to happen. Dude, this guy's looking red. Somebody jacked my new avatar. This guy uh, looks like he wants to burn me. If it's red aggro, that would be a good litmus test for the deck. I would look forward to such a battle. So according to my notebook, we've won eight in a row against competitive-ish games. I know we've won a lot more than that because I don't even track any more games that, like the last one, that just were not games. So we're doing well. Um, ooh, this is tempting, but it's too slow. I might keep it on second hand, and things just got worse. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> White mana, of course. He's, he's showing all the red, and he's, uh... Yep. He's like me. See, I just pick one avatar, one thing, and I did red last year, or last season. I did the same red background with my avatar because I just want everyone to always be afraid I was playing red. So, I think we lead with Oath of Nyssa and Evolving Wilds so that we know better what our Sylvan Ranger wants to get next turn. Educate our decisions. Right now we need a lot of things. We need double white, we need double red, we need double black. Now we have all the fixins to do it, and Oath of Nissa means we can play our walkers a lot easier. So actually I'll take a walker if I get the chance to. Let's see what we get. Hmm, okay. Uh, we'll take the white. We do want variety in our basic lands wherever we can get it. And we'll go get the red. Bounce, I think you're going to miss the boat on this one, dude. If that's Simic, it's looking pretty Boros. Oh my god. <laughs> Our opponent's going for the Wildfield Scarecrow. I tried this card. I tried it in a deck. What was it? It was Delirium. I just hated it. It's such a bad... Just, what a card, right? Oh my goodness. You know, Bounce, if there's something I admire about you, it's your ability to let things go. <laughs> Just kind of kidding there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm up against the real format staples here, aren't I? <laughs> These decks, indeed... Do you ever feel like a plastic bag drifting through the wind, wanting to start again? Uh, well, I've never clubbed a seal, so I don't know the feeling. I do feel embarrassed sometimes. I'm not gonna, not gonna pretend I don't. But I can't choose my opponents. My opponents didn't choose me. Blues Clues? Ha! Get it, Babs. I played Thopter Clues the other day already. You can watch it on the replay if you're interested. <laughs> might as well watch some Duels with Covert, that's right. And you might as well hit the like button if you're having fun, because I got a lot more duels to play and a lot more decks to show off. I've got ideas for days. Since he's a little short on mana, let's see if we can get him to block that Sylvan Ranger. 
Uh, I think it's like the first deck that I play on uh, day two of Shadow's Oath launch. And I, it's in the descriptions. Like, I went through and updated all my descriptions to be helpful in that way. Anyway, uh, press for answers. That was a weird card that I used in my Blues Clues deck, as you might call it, that actually did not suck. All right, we're going to leave this game. It wasn't competitive, and it's pretty much a runaway, so let's try to get something better. Thirty. Not going to make rank 40 today though I do have to go in about 20 minutes I know sad 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 I love my red green wolves man I love that deck I'm gonna work on some updates with it it didn't have enough instant speed stuff to let me flip my wolves and still have a profitable turn so I've got some ideas for um, improving it that I can't wait to take out and mess with. But yeah, the Red Green Wolves, it's an animal. And if it, it so far it's been able to beat just about everything that's been in front of it, including Ramp, so if Ramp's going to stay competitive, it's got a lot of tools. Uh, ramp uh, just needs kind of a better uh, take on removal, I think. The answers aren't the same for this format that they were for the last one. They're definitely not the same. Hey, we coexist. Got on to um, Magic Duel's Helper and built a deck. That's awesome. I am hoping to see more people over there that I know, because I really like that website. It is a really cool uh, place to put it. Um, what's feeling most consistent? Uh, the Wolves right now have been the most consistent, but I'll probably find something better. This is really consistent. This has actually, for a four-color deck, this mana has been really consistent. Really, Prez is good. Uh, I really liked Press for Answers. I just lock them down, get more clues. Lock them down, get for more clues. I mean, I don't know. It was cheap. It was low opportunity cost. It fit my curve. I hear you lose the option to leave after a concession once you hit rank 30. Well, let's find out. If you can figure a way to make the wolves unbounceable, so others can net deck you, and present a challenge with that free meal. That would be awesome. I, I'm confused. Um, coexist is a good guy word. Um, doo -doo. So this lets me play a turn two ranger. So I guess I should do that in hopes of playing a turn four Nahiri. <laughs> nice plot twist, Nighthawk. Tried to make an ally deck. Good job. <laughs> Did you make a video? Is that going to be your first video of the season? Is that what is that what we can anticipate? Tried turns into tired really quick. Um, let's see. I guess we'll get another black because we got red, white, red, white. Uh, we'll get another white in case we draw Gideon. I have not tried five color walkers. I don't see the appeal. Um, the cards I'm missing from blue are big blue jays, small blue jays, Kiora, and um, Oath of Jace. And I miss Oath of Jace. That's the only thing I'm actually missing. I definitely haven't really needed the other jace because other planeswalkers do just as good a job of generating all that value. So I just don't see the need. Um, if I ever feel like I'm not getting enough out of the deck, then maybe there is a need. So I think the play is Quagmire and go get a Swamp. 
First, let's attack. We don't really want to trade, but we don't want to block either. If he attacked us, I wouldn't block because I'd save my ranger to, to protect my planeswalker. So we may as well attack. Chandra is uh, probably the best walker. Okay, it looks like we're up against ramp. This should be a good game. This should be a battle. Better go and get your armor. Get your armor. Well, there's a good draw. Get your armor. Why does love always feel like a battlefield? Battlefield, whoa, whoa, battlefield. This guy's not gonna let us go easily into that good night. It looks like he's gonna play ramp with some new toys. Let's see if he can cope with a wanderer. And I've got a declaration. Ooh, this is looking good. Hello, Jotty. CGB's magical singing. Yep, you come for the magic, you stay for the music. I know. I know. You don't have to tell me. So this turn we can Nahiri. And Wanderer can attack. We can try to discard a Radiant Flames and try to draw something better. I think that's the play. Get in there, big dude. Let's put some pressure up. Let's hope for not a Chandra's... You know what? Chandra's Ignition would be such a blowout. Maybe I'm supposed to play around it. What do you guys think? Hmm. Am I supposed to play around a Chandra's Ignition here? That would be such a blowout, too. I'm, uh, let's see. I mean, Nahiri can always come down next turn, but she'll just be dead. Like, I could use, I could lose. Hmm. I could lose Nahiri and Woodland Bello, and Woodland Wanderer if he just has it. But if he doesn't have it, and he goes up to, like, Ulamog, and I don't have Declaration in Stone when Ulamog shows up, because it's not clear if he has Ulamog right? Or it's not clear if he has Chandra's Ignition. Not every deck plays that anymore, but every deck plays Ulamog. I'm just gonna do it. Ugh, that was... I don't know. I'm not sure. Sometimes you just get that feeling. I just got that feeling. I know I'm about to kill it. I know I got that feeling. You are now watching the throne. Don't let me get in my zone. Um, is this, this deck right now is not on Duel's Helper, because it, it's random names, four color deck, and I just reworked some cards in it, but I will put this on Duel's Helper, uh, probably by the end of the day, because it has done really well. We lost one game to some stupid elves, but we've won over ten games. Mm -hmm. So now his turn is a bad turn, where he's just, uh, get, using Nissa to get a forest, so... He didn't have a big follow-up, no explosive veggies or anything like that, so I feel good. I mean, he's going to get to pop his clue. Oh, he got some ramp and he gets to flip Nissa. That's actually pretty good, but we get to kill Nissa, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we get to kill Nissa. All right. If he makes the four, four, that's not a great ignition target here. All right. Land. <laughs> hmm. So, one, two, three, seven. He can 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He can block three of it, take three, and die. So I can kill Nissa. Then what do I want to do? I think I play Nahiri and cycle this Radiant Flames. It's not that good. I really can't let him keep drawing cards off Nissa because he'll eventually get to the big action and I'll be in trouble. Hopefully Nahiri hits a land so we can get Bellower on. I would have loved to bellowed this turn. Absolutely would have loved to bellow this turn. Okay, hit a land. Woohoo! Ah. I love how Nighthawk says, what does red give elves? Not what, not why do you need five color elves? What does red give elves? Because he's already on it. You know he's already played or built four color elves. He knows very well that all you get is active treason for no reason whatsoever. But then you have to remember, Babs loves Chandra. So she's probably going to put Chandra in there because she can. <laughs> and that's what I'm guessing. Flame Shadow, duh. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> now, if he... Okay, here comes the ignition, boys. Here it comes. Um, So, if he's going to ignite, we don't want to play the Bellower. We do want mana up to go Death Touch. One, two, three. So we have two mana left. So we just want to do nothing. Here comes the ignition. Ah, oh, Mina and Den. Good call. You got it. Hey guys, he had it. He had it. Sometimes you just get a feeling, man. Sometimes it's just a feeling. And he goes after Nahiri. Lucky us. So he is rocking and rolling. Not gonna be an easy one. You're sniping? I'm not sniping. So that attack makes me think he might have a fiery impulse. And if he has a fiery impulse for this, we are in a lot of trouble. Because we'll have to draw a land, just to have a prayer. Of course we have Nahiri, who can give us two cracks at a land. And we have a lot in the deck. So, we're at 43, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 26, 19 out of 43 is about a 50-50 chance to draw the land. And there was nothing he could have fiery impulsed in that. I think we go for it. It's risky. Okay. He didn't have it. Probably because he wasn't very scared of Nahiri, and he probably has something like Rolling Thunder to tip it off, to just kind of kill it. That's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's a Rolling Thunder thing. I'm just glad he didn't fiery impulse my uh, Quagmire. He's got something he can play. Why isn't he? Pl What's he doing? Maybe he's reading the quagmire. Maybe he didn't know it had death touch. Ah, uh, there you go. All right, land. Need a land. 
Untapped land. Uh, you are not it. Nahiri now will be able to exile that. So I don't think I want to get rid of my Radiant Flames, because we may need it. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Let's uh, shut that thing down. Even though Nahiri can exile it, we can do better. So, yep, let's go get our Sage. Say bye bye Yes, die. <laughs> what else is the Duels deck helper for? Uh, good question. So far, I'm using it just to collect my decks and be able to link to them in one spot, much like people are doing on NGA with those threads, but I like the interface for building and I like the stats. I just like everything I get out of the duels helper place more. It also helps me brew better because the vi the browser is visual. So for me, I'm very visual. I'm not good at like looking at list of cards. I have to view the cards themselves to remember that they do stuff. So uh, I hope that answered the question. I would say if you want your deck discussed, you can go ahead and post it over on NGA for discussion. And I think uh, Duel's Helper is more of kind of a place to save it. But I know I, so I told him it would be really cool to have a place where you could like rank them, like star ratings, like from Amazon. Oh man, what is the play? Complicated. Less complicated. But I think I want to play Gideon, don't I? Hold that Obnix back. But I can't play Pilgrim and Gideon, so I only get to play one thing this turn, so maybe I do play Ob. Let's attack first. We are in danger, but we definitely want to play more threats so that Ulamog can only take out two of them. <laughs> Now we'll see if Gaia's Revenge wrecks us. It's a good possibility. Land go? Uh oh. 13. Hmm. This will be my last game. Let's try to go out with a good bang. <sighs> we still don't have enough white to play Gideon and Eile. I really do want Eile on the battlefield. I really do want Gideon on the battlefield. But I think we can just hold on to Gideon here. Let's put Eile out there. Aw, oh, that sucks, Doctor. Your host has tons of hidden fees. Boo! Nobody likes that. Oh, we did it. And uh, guess what? I didn't get the free gold option, so it looks like that might be a legit thing, you guys. But it looks like we got there. I just still have to finish this AI off. What does he have in his hand? Is it all land? Is it all land? I think this whole game came down to playing around that Chandra's Ignition. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely did. Playing around the rare two of. <laughs> that's duels, guys. That's duels. Alright, guys. This is the end. We have come to the end of uh, my stream, at least for now. Maybe I'll be on later, uh, much later tonight, but for the time being, it is goodbye. I came down to playing around that Chandra's Ignition. Absolutely.
Yep, absolutely did. Playing around the rare two of. <laughs> That's duels, guys. That's duels. Alright, guys. This is the end. We have come to the end of uh, my stream, at least for now. Maybe I'll be on later, uh, much later tonight, but for the time being, it is goodbye. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Make sure you follow if you haven't, um, because I've got a lot more decks and I play nothing but duels. If you liked what you saw today, you'll probably enjoy what I do tomorrow. No surprises here. All right, uh, later everybody, and uh, have fun. I am hungry, so I was going to say go get something good to eat, but that's what I'm doing. I recommend you do it yourself. <laughs>